chat. I don't think I've ever pulled a tick off of you naked. That was a really weird. That was the, definitely the low light of my day. Or it could have been the highlight. You never know. No. It freaked me the fuck out. Oh, are we live? What's good, YouTube? It is your boy Thesis, aka Thesis himself from Vaping with Thesis Ass, right? God bless it. Now, look, look mm, bitches. So, um, really quick, I want to go ahead and touch on something. Oh my are you all right? No, my body wasn't made for digging dirt. Nah, clearly, your body wasn't even made to be in the sun, yet it's no. your favorite thing in the world to do. It is, it well, does obviously seem, look at me. It does seem I don't know. Pretty hmm. ironic at the fact that your skin tone, your hair, everything about you says stay inside. Cover up. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. Bam. But no, by light by next week, I'll be good to go. What's going on, guys? 808 Kevin, Money Kitties, Bob Squatch, Mother and the Queen. Still our... I'll change it after I'll, Do I'll you send it. pictures to uh Cassandra yet? Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. I completely forgot. Shut up. Oh, Bob Squatch is the first one in here. I know. I saw that. I was like, damn. Melanin Queen, Bob Builder. Where's Bogan at? Hey, whoa. Give us 10 minutes. Calm the fuck down, <laughs> asshole. Hello again this from Fridley. This is not Fridley. about Bogan. This is about us. Um, okay. John Augusta, Erich. Uh, 808. <sighs> Melissa. John Q. Sack. Georgia Boy. Cloud Chaser, Hellbag, Chris Vapes, Austin, VG. Welcome to Sunday night, guys. Bam. And if you guys haven't done so, hit that like button, mother lickers. I'm going, I'm sharing this as we speak on the uh, book faces real quick. Um, um. So I'm just going to chat about our day a little bit while you do that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So for those of you guys who are new to this um we live in minnesota sorry i totally just lost i was gonna say what the fuck happened train of thought. lost my whole train of thought we live in minnesota um what happens here i don't know if this is the same anywhere else but what happens here in minnesota is like the first day it hits 60 degrees yep. everybody's outside doing yard work yep. it's just like how that ha how that happens and so of course being the Minnesotans we are, we've been doing the exact same thing for the last like what week? Yeah. But very seriously, the last two days. So yesterday we got a ton of cleanup done. And today it was like, all right, we're ready to make our Home Depot run. And for you guys that don't know, it's like a home improvement Menards kind of store. And we get in the car, I like pack because we need like 50 bags of mulch. So I like lay the seats down, I get the blanket up, I get everything prepared and ready to go. And we pull up to Home Depot. Oh my God. You guys, literally, the line to get into Home Depot was on the sidewalk. Everybody was, they weren't spaced out six feet. Let's but just be no, honest. No, they weren't spaced out no six feet. In a line, like all the way down the sidewalk, it wrapped all the way around the parking lot to get into the store. I'm going to go ahead and send so, you guys a video of it. So my assumption is they were only allowing certain amount of people into the store at a time. So everybody else had to wait outside for their turn. It was pretty ridiculous. I was like, oh, this is not happening. Like, we're not going into the store. And so we went across the street to go to Menards. Exactly the same situation. Line to get into the store, like wrapped around the parking lot. Um, and so we found a little uh, like nursery Green place. I needed some flowers, so we stepped there, made our way home, spent the rest of the day outside planning. Come in the house to take a shower, you guys. And I'm a super sensitive redhead, as you can see. And so I've got like little skin tags and all kinds of stuff all over my back. And I was getting ready to take a shower, and I went like this, and I could feel something on my side. And I was like, I don't know if that's part of my body or not. Like it feels really weird. And I like looked up and I reached on like this and I had a fucking tick. It was fucking nasty. I had a tick. So fully naked, about ready to get in the shower. I freak out, <sighs> run out the bedroom, trying to yell for Nas. His mom and dad are standing in the so kitchen. What the fuck is going on, bro? 
Mom and dad are standing in the kitchen. So I'm like yelling at his mom to get his mom to come into the shower to help me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking deal with two things. I won't deal with ticks, terrorism and or spiders. All three of those things are not my thing. Clearly. I'm not, I'm not. Ticks, terrorisms have, and tarantulas. And tarantulas. That's just the <laughs> three it. T's. <laughs> I call it a T3 right there. So we have this super cool device. You guys, if you don't have one and ticks are a problem in your in your environment, it's like this little <sighs> hook that goes like this. It's tiny. And it actually, like, you put it up against your skin and underneath the tick's head and you just, what is it called? It's called a tick tornado. And a you tick twist tornado. It and you twist it and it pulls the tick up, out man. of your I'm skin. I'm so glad I don't live in America. Ticks sound horrible and disgusting. You don't you have those? You live in fucking the deadliest. You have nine out of the deadliest yeah, ticks. I know where they are. Like ticks, man. Like you go for a swim. You just come out. I got Lyme disease. I'm going to be fucking like wrecked for my life. Like fuck no. that. You want to hear a fun story? Well, I was just in our yard. It wasn't I like have- we were anywhere. I, I know you just play out in the grass. I got a mate in Albany and he's like, yeah, man, the ticks are bad up here. Kids play out in the garden and they come back and I'm like, fuck that shit. <laughs> I want to meet the guy in Albany with a Southern accent. I think it'd be kind of fun. He doesn't have a Southern accent, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just a general American accent. When I'm doing American, it's, it, yep. if I'm like going to just quintessential American, it's always a Southern accent. Mm-hmm. I was just watching. Is that a- like a pretty general? Consensus, yeah. It's Except like for. When uh, people do English, they're like, are you doing, Gavda? It's yep. Yeah, I have the perfect British accent. The perfect. It's almost better than a lot of the Brits I know. First, hold on, Bogan. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, brother. Thank you, man. Is this oh, who's this? Is this your wife? This is my wife. Lovely to meet you, Mrs. Mandy. Mrs. My name. Mandy. There you go. <laughs> no, no, it's your wife. One, I have one of those. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did I, did I not say Mandy? No, Fuck. No, I'm sorry. No, but that's okay. Can you and I can reach it myself? But can you please pass me that bottle of ice? I see. I see hot. No, you. I don't know if I can. You got it. So, so, so this, I have a question for you. This is just like my first observation. Can you get a haircut where you live right now? Actually, it's funny. Um, yes. So they sh- a lot of uh, the hairdressers weren't shut. They they did this thing where they were like, hairdressers have got to shut, and then they're like, no, actually, they can do it with social distancing. And then most of the hairdressers, like the big chains, they all shut anyway. They they decided they didn't want to be responsible for an outbreak or like liable or whatever. So mm-hmm. they they all closed. Um, but the smaller ones, the the individually operated, a lot of them stayed open. So I went and got a haircut uh, like a week ago because I got sick of it. I was like, I'm fucking done with this. I'm going to get a haircut. I don't care. And um and we're all good here in my state. We've had 11 days straight of no new infections, so we're wow. pretty Whoa, pretty on shit. top of it. So I went and got a haircut, but I just got a text message uh, from the, the normal barber that I go to because they're a chain and they're like, hey, because you're a, a member customer, you get first access to come and get a cut where we're opened up again. Um, so, yeah, the, the, they're all sort of opening up again now. They're, um, the whole state's kind of about to start doing like phase one of opening up again kind of thing. That's good, though. That's all. 11 days and no new yeah that's excellent that's pretty amazing we've uh, it goes up and down non-stop uh-huh. well because that's what i do i cut hair and so obviously it was like the first thing i noticed i'm like hey yeah. hey somebody got a haircut yeah. um but we can't uh we're looking at like june 1st yeah but, um but we have a lot of regulations we're gonna have to abide by before we can even begin yeah. to open up yeah i was gonna say you your boss i think when it, it sounded like your boss was pretty comfortable with people being like no we're not oh fuck there's a, there's a moth, moth that's scared the shit out of me that pretty comfortable with the fact that you guys most of the people volunteered to say like we would prefer not to come back until the levels have gotten safe enough to where mm-hmm. people who have it can stay home and everyone else can i think the biggest I think because you guys are a lot more sort of state and governed by your smaller Mm-hmm. Uh, governments rather than the federal government ruling everything so your governors are making decisions and then your mayors are making decisions and you and your people in charge of, of more local stuff are making decisions so it's a little bit different over there over here it's sort of the states so taken directive from the federal government and there's been very little kind of arguing or, or not matching up of the federal and the state stuff interestingly it's enough 24 million people than it is 280 it is we've got 328 yeah. and i think i looked up last night it was around 40 how what is it in australia 40 million total 24 24 million jesus i think Canada's <laughs> third, i was gonna I was, say isn't that like the state of california here yeah it is well, but no, it's Cal- cali's like 80 million dude or something isn't it oh isn't my it's, God. it's Cali- something ridiculous i don't know if it's 80 but it's, it's mike pretty, 
yeah, Mike, what is it, brother? 30 million. 30. 30 million in California. That's fucking insane. Is Mike like your, is Mike like your Jamie? He's our young Jamie, yes. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so dude, like in the background doing stuff. Yeah. Dude, it's, he's that's exactly. Way, that's way professional. That's a it's easier setup. than having to stop the fucking show. And dude, he's oh, a, yeah. he's a trooper. The, our supporters blow my fucking mind. For the, I don't know. I have no idea. And we become that close of friends, like a, like a small, well, the large family. Uh, and we have a lot of. There's a lot of. St- st- silly questions that i put out on the patreon page hey what do you guys want to ask bogan i'm sorry derek we're not asking about sex organs um and we're not asking well that's as far as we'll take it okay um but one of my favorite ones that i got mike sent us some questions that we've that myself and my buddy josh have talked about with liquid but i want to just touch on this one um were you more of a cunt before or after you started youtube (laughs) I've always been a cunt. Always yeah. been a cunt. Or does the country say the see, same? I don't see that at all. <laughs> That's because we use cunt in a much different way. I know. Very different. Very yeah. different. Um, we use it like we use mate. It's like a term of endearment, you know. Uh, he's a top cunt, so he's like a good. He's a good yeah. dude. Good oh, dude. okay. Or if he's a shit cunt, then he's he's real bad. You don't want to be a shit cunt. Yeah. You don't want to be a shit cunt. <laughs> you want to be fucking <laughs> bloody loose, 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 just bloody. <laughs> roast beef no. cunty st- no it's, it's like when a cunt isn't but we don't correctly. we don't use it in like in the true definition like when you guys say like oh he's a badass motherfucker you don't mean like he's a real bad person who has sex with his mother like that that's, yeah, of course you know what i mean like that's not the the literal definition of how you use it and yep. that's kind of the same here we're not actually talking about the organ <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So should, what I wanted to get at with this COVID shit was you and I would talk for like under four minutes, but there's a lot in that conversation the other day um, on the phone. And that was, it's bizarre because, and I don't know if it's the same where you're at, but we're trying to get a, a feel for, we, we've talked to a couple of people in New York, people in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, people in Europe, this different situations with this disease, with this virus here, it's turned into a political divide which blows my fucking mind Mm. that i have friends who are you know fairly well educated people i'm talking graduated high school weren't flunkies fucking got a two-year degree at a local community college great and genuinely believe that covid19 was a conspiracy set up by the democrats which seems half-assed backwards but it was a (laughs) it was a disease made up by democrats in congr- in uh, cahoots with P- with the laboratory in Wuhan, China, oh, on yeah. purpose. Yeah, is it and is there any difference? And I'm just gonna, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say which po- which party they belong to, but cl- it's pretty clear. Um, I think we have. L- there's definitely plenty of that shit on my on my Facebook feed when I when I look on it. Um, people, uh, you know, crazy stuff. But I think it's probably um, the 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 more da- not the more the more that's not fucking words. Um, the the scarier thing is probably in Australia is the the apathy or, or Australians not taking it seriously um, yeah. because we're kind of we're pretty laid back about that kind of shit anyway. And so until until we actually see shit really happening here or until we saw stuff really happening here in the in the first couple of weeks when some infections really spiked and we had you know about we've had about 90 deaths or something now but people got a little bit scared but there were still you know people going to the store and not social distancing and you know (laughs) standing right behind each other and all this kind of shit and not really taking it seriously i think that's probably more of the the worry that australians have than going like oh my government's trying to fucking you know keep me inside and and you know tinfoil hat shit there's probably less of that and more just complacency with aussies yep. i think than um than anything and and the fucking panic paper toilet buying did they <laughs> so do that there too way too seriously and other people not taking it seriously enough so you guys had the toilet paper issue there too oh yeah 
Oh yeah. my God. I think it yeah, was it literally was- probably in the last like week or two that you can finally walk into. A- no, yeah. okay, this is what happened. So do you guys have a Costco or like a Sam's club? Yeah. Do you know what that well, is? That's, okay. That's what happened with me. Right. So when this thing happened, we go to Costco. I love Costco. I love my yeah. big bottle of ranch dressing or my yes. fucking, you know, like it's a, it's a liter. It's a thousand mils of ranch. <laughs> dressing. We were just there last week. Yeah. Much. Yep. But I love that. I have my big bags of chips and they have great socks. Costco have the best socks at the best prices. <laughs> like I get my Good socks know. from Costco. Good to know. Love my, I like fresh socks. I hate old socks. I hate stretched out socks. I fucking, I can't do with it. Yeah, he is the same way. Uh, it has to be brand new. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, if I was if, ever, if I was ever like, like Hollywood money rich, I would have a brand new pair of socks every day. I would just, I just have a new pair of socks every day. I'd never wear the pair of socks to wear. <laughs> I don't see the purpose of wearing like crusties, even after they're washed, they're never the same because they get all pilly or pill. What's the word? Yeah. The pill, pill, pill pilly. Yeah. Words. Yeah, really I, think I know what you mean there. I, yeah. I hate that. So yeah, anyway, getting off topic. I love Costco. We go to Costco every you only need to go every like three months because everything's so fucking big. Yeah. But we buy the 48 roll pack of toilet paper at a normal schedule. We buy it when we need it. We buy one pack and then when it's getting low, we go to Costco and we get another one. But 48, man, that lasts you. Like a long fuck. People don't realize how long a 48 roll of toilet paper lasts you. It's three, four months minimum. Yeah. 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 We were only like maybe a third into one of our 48 packs and we're still not finished it. And the oh whole gosh. the whole fucking crazy toilet paper shortage is kind of come and gone and we still haven't needed to buy any. So like people that bought three 48 packs at Costco, you're not buying toilet paper for the next year. Yeah. No, absolutely. It was the same thing here. We were kind of experiencing the same thing. It was like, we don't need toilet paper right now, but do we need to start panicking about in three months when I'm going to need toilet paper? Like, yeah. When is it going to come back? But it's also short. short, It was shortages of bizarre shit, like just spices too. Just wait. So we went to Costco last week and I'm walking down the dog food aisle to go get dog food and literally can't even fit into the dog food aisle because they have pallets of toilet paper toilet paper toilet paper just like lined all the way through (laughs) the middle of the aisles and i'm like okay now things have really gotten and this is also bothersome to me because i'm like i I was waiting and hoping to like i'm still hoping for one day for americans specifically to get their head out their ass get their hand out their ass and stop using toilet paper and start purchasing bidets yeah and (laughs) for my birthday like i've wanted one so bad for the longest time mandy finally got me a bidet and i'm like it's about now my ass is lickable at any time (laughs) i don't ever have to worry about like like oh should i have to shower before sex fuck that i go and i take a poop and i push a button and it's warm water in my anus and it's perfect it's absolutely flawless I haven't used that yet. That's the, I'm waiting till the bathroom is done. Yeah, we're in the middle of a bathroom. Oh, you see God. that big Texas dude like fit one of those bidet things and then use it for the first time and see his reaction? It's fucking hilarious. No, but I think I might film my reaction for the TikTok. Bogan, have you trans- transformed over to the TikTok? Have you have you taken the no. pill? Um, no, I haven't. Grim just got me to get Periscope. I think, I think Periscope. Nick, Periscope. He's like seven years late. I was going to say, are people still using Periscope? I don't think so, man. I stopped my Periscoping years ago. I don't know. I can't keep up with all these fucking social media accounts. I um, couldn't I couldn't stand TikTok. I'm telling you right now, it's it's uh it's like 15 seconds of heroin. That's all that's all I can say. Isn't that just Instagram story? I don't get the point in TikTok. Isn't it just Instagram stories? It it is, but the problem is my Instagram has has uh what is that called? It's it's stagnated. And my I'm frustrated because like I have my stories will get more views in a day than my YouTube will in a week. Like sometimes. So I had a trending story when I was doing the closet hit something like a hundred and some thousand views in that time spent in 24 hours. <clears throat> but my Instagram wasn't growing because my content for vape stuff on Instagram is either a shadow band or is never promoted on, on the discover page is that what it's called feed? on the on, on like the public feed but my stories that have to do with diy stuff mm. blow up so i started doing all my diy stuff on tiktok and i'm not doing any vape related content at all on tiktok and i think i've amassed uh, 1.4 million views in under a week and it's the problem is monetization is it vaping? no is it I, vaping that kills it so from what I was told, um, so I, I pay to be, I, I did at one point pay to be a part of this group, uh, social media group with, um, I fucking forgot the, the leader dude's name. And he 
he do, runs analytic, but he does it by, by hand manual. So you got to wait it for like a week or two. He's able to get direct analytics of exactly what the AI is doing for this. So a portion of this week. And then there was a, there was a drop during that period. He's like, whatever's going on via vaping. Uh, Cause there was no, there was, I was like me and one other guy that was a vape influencer. If you want to even call it that in this group. And he said, your guys' shit is specifically being targeted to basically only hit your followers. Like maybe, maybe it's going to hit a bunch of your followers, yeah. but for whatever reason, I'm assuming it's because of the guidelines, the laws and all that shit. Like the, the people, the way that the government especially is attacking vaping or was during that period. Cause right now it's COVID uh, yeah. and now they're doing the same thing with COVID. Now, if you have COVID related po- uh, posts, they're being dropped purposely by the algorithm. Um, which is actually kind of my, but informative posts. If it's a meme, if you make a COVID meme, blast it off just fine. But if it's <laughs> anything that's that's in, informative and yeah. conspiracy based as well, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's being dropped. Have uh, you seen any experience with like your Instagram or your yeah. YouTube or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, Instagram has definitely it's slowed. Like it, it was growing massively a year ago, and then it's definitely slowed down um, in terms of of getting new followers. I still get really good traction on, on a post. I can still get plenty of likes, um, you know, put a, put a photo up and get a thousand likes, 1200 likes, no worries, but yep. um, it doesn't but that's what's crazy. Oh, go ahead. New, go ahead. new followers. I'm not, not really getting the new follower. Uh, they're trickling in, but they're not like they were before. So it's obviously not popping up on people that aren't actually following already. Precisely. And what you just said blows my mind. Like I would assume with your following with your, yeah, with your following via Instagram, you'd Mm. be getting several thousand minimum. Um, I I could hit between 450 and 500 and that's, and that'd be a good post in terms of a picture. Mm. And I have significantly less followers than you. What is your follower count? I'm at like 65,000 or something like that. I have 300% less followers than you. That doesn't make sense. I have 22,000 followers. Yeah, you've got about a third. Yeah, so you're, you're 300% more, 200% less or something, whatever. Yeah. But I've got friends who do who make tech deck videos who will get 100,000, not maybe 100,000, but like 60 or 70,000 views on a video on Instagram, and they've got maybe 15K followers. It's just what? bizarre. It's Yeah, it's just crazy how, how it works. It, if an algorithm yeah, takes they're definitely, it off. Uh, they're definitely uh, throttling the vape stuff. 100%. But that's also why I made the conscious decision. Like, listen, I love vaping and vaping. I'm always going to be here vaping and vice versa. But like with TikTok, I want to personally and focus not, on my bills. Is it, is, it, is it the name of your account? Has it got anything? Have you got vaping in the name of your Instagram account? Nope. Not at all. And even when you post non vaping content, it still isn't. Nope. My non vaping videos are triple, quadruple the, the, the amount. Okay. So as soon as you post something that's non vaping, it's. Well, that would be the same for me because I post a photo of like me and my kids at the park. Yep. And that'll get shitloads of, of likes. That'll get two and a half thousand likes. Yep. Same here. It's, and then it, you'll it, post a photo of a, of a vape device and it's like a thousand. Yep. So Precisely. That's, oh, okay. I just thought people like me and my kids more than vape shit. <laughs> I still, no, I, <laughs> I'm totally convinced it's still the case though because yeah. they see you're vaping and vaping and vaping and all of a sudden they get a little glimpse of like yeah, your real I don't know. life. I could be that i don't know it's hard fuck it yeah. i don't know i'm just gonna keep plowing on <laughs> i know this is kind of breaking the the rule of the conversation real quick but i have to show you guys the line from today so this is from today um fuck just a couple of hours ago can you guys see this no shit yeah so let's just go and, and pan that quick slowly this is where it started is back here what's this for like a home depot yeah yep. that's exactly what it is this is the line to get in there today we tried to go by lawn or like landscaping stuff for our backyard today they're actually pretty pretty well spaced apart now that i'm looking at this it they're was way social media social yeah. media social social, <laughs> social distancing <laughs> but it was at home at menards it was looked like it was legitimately looked like it was black friday <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was it's crazy to see now well that's because people haven't been allowed out to these stores have they well everyone's staying home so i assume they're all probably well, and it's a home weekend stuff. so i think yeah. the people who are still working are getting yeah. the opportunity to go but i can't, also can't um, but think with just to touch back on that. I do think it has to do with people enjoy seeing their favorite vape 
influencers, uh, reviewers and shit, like do stuff at home. They want to see, like, like they want a home, sneak just... peek of like inside their life. Because yeah. they just see you guys reviewing mods and reviewing devices and talking business. And so I think when they get like a sneak peek into like the real life of it all. Thank you so much for that text, Mama Miss Hope. So I have a question, like a, a based about, uh, do you guys, like, do you, you're married, right? Married kids, two kids. Yeah, married couple kids. Yeah. So do you guys have any, like, is your, does your wife, do you guys have any like weird, is she weird about being on your social media? Does she have any like weird feelings about it? Yeah, she generally, she's a bit shy. I mean, she's shy, but she also does her own stuff. Like she's a, a wedding celebrant. So she's still, you know, talking to people and, and having to do a, what's the, what's the, the word I'm looking for? A, a facilitator. Um, you know, she's in the, in the public space as well. She's got her Instagram and stuff like that, but much, much smaller. And she's quite shy about it. So yeah, generally she doesn't, um, want to be on the camera a lot. I did a, a little video recently on our family holiday over to, um, Kangaroo Island. And, and yeah, she's not in much of that. Cause she just, she just generally doesn't like it. She's quite shy about her, uh, her looks and all the rest of it, despite being a, a gorgeous woman. So yeah, she generally shies away from my camera stuff. But she'll do her I own can thing. Totally own. relate to that. I can totally yeah. relate to that. This took me a <laughs> long time to get into it. And I still like we've got people on here who are like throwing out NASA's Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, don't like I don't want if people didn't want to find me, it's not yeah. that hard. They can yeah. figure it out. But like I don't want this flood of I yeah, take totally her mom. Get it. like that much attention. I tagged her mom on Snapchat a couple of weeks ago when she made cookies and she's like, what is happening to my Snapchat? Right now? <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, my Snapchat goes hard, Mama K. Like, you just go have to get used to that shit. If you send me something, I'm going to tag you with people. are gonna, And if you get any dick pics, I apologize. We have a fun game with my mate in the UK who's not like he doesn't do any influencing or anything like that. He's a uh, he's like a carpenter sort of thing. And um, but every time I because I go over to the expo twice a year usually, and I stay with him in London, and then he's been coming up to the expo with me, and I kind of dragged him into the whole vape community. Like he started vaping um, independently before I met him, but he was just doing a here and there, and then he's fully got into it now, and now he's coming to shows with me. But we have this game where every time I'm over there, I just tag him in everything, <laughs> and we have a hashtag. <laughs> hashtag free Carl um, because he hangs out with me so much at these expos that people in the industry, like other Chinese manufacturers assume that he's like an influencer and start <laughs> handing him free shit. <laughs> so we've got a hashtag for him and we just try and get him like as many new followers off of my fucking Instagram posts just for fun. Oh my God. That's, that's hilarious. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's badass. Have you ever been mist mistook for anybody ever? Um, just, oh, no, just, not mistaken. I don't know. I have a pretty unique look, so you do. That's why I was bringing this up. But there is a, and I just, I just, this is going to be a, a pointless, uh, a pointless post, a pointless thing to say because now I forgot the name of the dude. Uh, he's a drummer in a band. He looks. Oh yeah, they are his murder. Uh, I've had a few people. Okay, thank you. Saying that I look like from the guy from They Are Murder. Yes, similar. Not, and they even look like. But it's uh, you're the it's only like person same, I could ever. Same. Yeah. It's like, it's like a skinny things. dude. We just have that Travis Barker look. We have that skinny dude with tattoos. That's what I was going to ask him. So <laughs> you love beer. I love beer. I gain weight. If I look at my knife, I gain weight because I think about cutting any, just cutting meat. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I gain weight immediately. You and my wife seem to have the fastest metabolism I have ever seen. Yeah, I just, yeah, I don't you know. I drink just, a lot of beer. That's a lot of calories. Yeah. I just yes. thank my dad. He has skinny <laughs> jeans and um Their mine come from too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her, my her dad's dad, like 60, yeah. what is he, 65 this year, I think. And um yeah, he's still like my skinniness, but with maybe a little more around the belly, but not much. Like it's not even a it's not even a belly. It's just he doesn't have a natural six pack anymore because he's kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still skinny, and uh, and I, I think I just get it from him because I eat shit food. I drink beer regularly, and um and I, I I play sport. You know, I play soccer, but um I don't do I don't do the exercise to counteract the amount of beer that I drink for sure. <laughs> my issue is I, I do the exercise and still am fat around the stomach and i hate it her dad looks like a pair of chopsticks he walking looks with just like apple. me except if he turns sideways he looks like he is nine months pregnant yeah and, <laughs> but he's so skinny it's it's bizarre it's i don't it's the only place he gains and it's just beer if you stop drinking beer probably go away but his stomach is so hard you ever you ever see like chuck liddell in his later years when he'd walk out and he had a giant beer buddy but but he had a six-pack at the same time 
<laughs> and it's 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 weird. It looks like an alien. It's kind of like where old man looks like. That's what I assumed. It starts I muscular and then kind of turns into a belly. Yeah, but then it's a six. I'm like, it looks like they were implanted. They don't look real. <laughs> Bro, with your um, with your liquids, let's talk about this real quick. And I know people want to talk about um, Dapo and etc. Whatnot. We'll get into that. I promise. Mm-hmm. With the single, I'm I'm interested in the single uh, battery. But with the liquids, uh, grab that that fun question. Because so when we, we had somebody down, ask. They said, "Do Bogan Brews distri- I don't okay, know how so to word this. And, the distribution and, in the United States here is really hard to find. Well, no, no, no. That's 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 not the question. Like board, brick nope, and mortar. Nope, nope, nope. So Mike the question worded it perfectly. And myself and my buddy Josh were talking about your liquid because him and I really liked the Quran Cola a lot, as mm-hmm. well as the, the lychee. The problem is finding in the U.S. And you have to grab Mike's question because he worded it perfectly. It says, there we go. Um, Bogan Brews Juice Line Distribution in the United States. It's very fine, hard to find here. Is there more partnership related or more of an American palette thing? Boom. I've never seen it in a brick and mortar here in California, and everywhere you see it online is usually out of stock. Um, I do a little bit of the liaison. I obviously like try and get stores set up with it and that kind of stuff, but then it's obviously down to the, to the company that bottles and distributes it to, to get it over there um we're in a few places around the u.s like if you go to vapenbogan.com there's then links to the u.s and the uk so i'm on there now and if i go to usa um let's see what do we got here while you're looking for it somebody wanted to make sure that i wished you a happy labor day today. yes happy oh it's ray ray said make sure you wish labor him a happy day. happy labor day is it labor day in america no, he no. said it's there. It's for you guys. It's Labor Day. Yeah. Is well, he wrong? So we have different Labor Days in different states, and Labor Day is not oh. really a holiday that anybody gives a shit about. In yeah. Australia. So fuck oh. all you no, guys who see, want to. No. See, the only wish- thing we do on Labor Day here in America is just drink. Yeah. It's just yeah. an excuse for people to have the day off of work and just drink. I think it's Labor Day in Victoria. I don't think South Australia has the Labor oh, Day. Okay. okay. So here we okay, go. Anyway. Yeah, you're on Kohler at the moment from uh, Haven Liquids. Um, HavenLiquids.com. Uh, they've got. I've got my stash. I'm just saying because at the time we were, we did find it, but it was it was like searching, even whatever links you had on your website at the time. This would have been circa ECC. Oh yeah, back like, then we didn't. Yeah, back a couple then, of years ago. A while ago. Right? Yeah. So, but hey, somebody else just commented here said that he they've been looking for it in the United States for a long time and they've had a really hard time finding it. Yeah. Well, Electric Tobacconist. Uh, let me see if they've still got stock at the moment they have got yeah so they've got the nick salts and they've got three of the six normal they haven't got the newer flavors um but what webs what website was that again so they can find it electric tobacconist okay um but yeah they've got the 60 mil bottles of the three first yeah they've got the first three in both salts and non-salts um they need to get the rest of them and I don't think Ohms and Watson are still, I don't know whether they're a website anymore. There's a lot of them closing down right now. I'll tell you what, even Vapor Day and, oh, no, they've got it. and yeah, Ohms and Watson have got some of the newer flavors like uh, Ridgy Didge. Oh, they're out of a lot of them though, but they do have some of them. Um, so yeah, Ohms and Watson. But if you go to vapenbogan.com, it's got links to all of those sites and it says UK, US, whatever. So whenever you're watching this or whatever, always just go to vapenbogan.com because the larger uh, online retailers will always be linked to to there. And that's the same anywhere else in the world. If you're in the UK. When, when they um, do that, do they be able to support you? Is it, uh, are they affiliate links? No, no, no. So, I mean, I don't, I, it doesn't work like that with juice lines. You, you basically just get paid a royalty off of every bottle sold. So okay. where the, wherever they buy it in the world, doesn't matter who they buy it from a brick and mortar store. Right. Or I, I've, I've made a commission off of any bottle that, that's gone anywhere. So excellent. Uh, yeah. That, that's always supporting me for sure. Awesome. So I've got a couple of questions. These are my personal questions with the, with the Bogan, the Blotto, the Blotto RTA, just because I, I, whilst building i think i even messaged you about it because i wanted to modify it not a respect for you i didn't um you modify, I okay. well I, I i wanted to try it as is you know what i'm saying but i, I well, yeah, try it first for sure of, of course um with that setup is that exactly how you like to vape like in terms of airflow the amount of airflow on on an rta yeah i mean um i don't, I don't generally when i'm using an rta i kind of like a little bit 
less airflow than than necessarily a dripper because I think okay. that helps the flavor because you've got a, a longer distance for it to travel. RTA is always going to have better flavor. So I think restricting the airflow a little bit improves the flavor on, on the RTA. But it's also just like, I don't I don't necessarily vape the same way every time. So it's it, for me, it, would, it just, it's a really great vape. It's not necessarily the way that I always want it. Sometimes I want a fucking trilogy, you know, with more air, airflow or something like that. Otherwise I'm using the mouth to lung, but yeah, it's just it's a great flavor RTA. I really enjoyed the the experience off of it. Um, I use it all the time. Um, so yeah, that's why, that's why we put it out. It's not necessarily like with the Bonzo, it, it was sort of, that is my ideal dripper vape. Whereas the Blotto I can love the Bonzo. just a really nice balance of flavor and clouds. Yeah, it is. It's the flavor and the, the flavor was phenomenal. The clouds from, I wanted so badly to open it up. Just because it was, it would fit my RTA. So I like just like a wide open RTA. Like it's a, I prefer actually a more of a restricted vape on a on an RDA than I do, you know, in an RTA. But I'm also you know, backwards like that. I'm rocking yeah, that cube. Yeah, of course, exactly. And the reason why I wanted to ask is I wanted to fucking mill out the, you know, all the the holes, the honeycomb little holes in the chimney. Yeah. All I want to do is was mill that out to like a quarter inch directly down in the middle i was curious to see if i could blow some fucking like cl- 2015 cloud comp clouds with that bad bitch and the, the flavor on it was phenomenal it was it's almost next to nothing there's a bunch of good rtas out there it's hard for me anyway it's hard to make an impressive rta that doesn't in some way or another resemble something else and the blotto i think did a solid job of doing that i think Pull yeah well, i had the idea of looking at a bottle cap I was just about to crack a beer a one day cap. and I was like, I was about to crack a beer and I was like, huh, that could look really cool as an RTA top. Well, I wonder if that'll work. And I just took a photo of it. I sent a, a picture to Dovpo and I was like, can we try and make this the the exterior on a, on a tank? And then they sent back like some renders and some prototypes came out with like a really domed top to it. And I was like, nah, that doesn't look like a bottle cap. We went back and forth about four prototypes. And I was like, yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Looks like a bottle cap. No, and that's, how the, that's how the design came from. I was literally just having a fucking beer. Because <laughs> <That's laughs> like you say, like you try and make an RTA or an RDA not look like other products on the market. Yeah. Because it's hard enough to find something technically that's different because so much have been done over the last six to 10 years in vaping. Mm-hmm. But you can, you, can take this, you can take functional design cues and, and put them into a product and no one's really going to mind. But if you make something look like another product that's the that's like the most lazy of the design because it, it doesn't doesn't make it perform better looking like another product so why are you pinching somebody else's aesthetics like you know for Plus example a- cars we all use abs brakes on our cars because they're it's a fucking good system you know we don't right. use drum brakes anymore so taking a technical feature i get but taking an aesthetic feature it makes no sense to me now, what happens when the aesthetic feature is also part of the technical? Like, just as an example, the honeycomb. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a great. It's it's aesthetic to me. It's aesthetic because the deck to me is the most important part of anything. Like, and I'm just being coming from a nerd. When I open something up, like when I built PCs, I didn't build them to, just for the case to look. I want the the motherboard, the wiring, the the liquid cooling, everything to be just as badass as the actual machine. Yeah, you it's know. gonna look good. Exactly. And I thought the deck on yours looked it was sexy. You had a sexy deck, Bogan. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was came sexy. Out cool. It all came together nicely. So So I'm gonna get speared if I don't ask you the question about the single battery Odin. <laughs> yeah, so people have been asking a lot about that. Uh, I posted and Dovpo posted a little sneak peek on Instagram stories the other day. Um but uh yeah, it's this is just a prototype. So the the, the final version um has a slightly different um position on the 510 plate and obviously has some engravings on the buttons oh shit um, you're just showing it like that god dang man and that's 21 oh, yeah, i've been showing it off in a few live videos um but there you go that's oh, look at the body one. there it's really nice and small and compact it's about the same size as the mirage from lost fate okay um it's a bit smaller than uh, here we go here this will give people a good size comparison um up against the top side light. Bear with me a moment. Hit the like button, guys, if you haven't done so already. So that's the 
that's the top side light which people have been really liking for a single battery and then there's the odin so as you can see it's significantly smaller than a than a top side light just to give you guys a bit of an idea. The top it's, side looks beautiful too. I didn't even I actually the top side's that. great, yeah. yeah. But really, really happy with how it's come out. I think anybody that likes single battery, low wattage, sort of your your mouth to lung up to your 50, 60, 70 watts, um, they're gonna love this. That's kind so of the did you anytime you design a product, do you have the V2 in mind, but when you when you have the V1 already? Not usually, but um, when we when we we came in wanting to do a dual battery twenty one seven hundred with a DNA two fifty C, like that was what I wanted to make. Uh, there wasn't something on the market currently that really offers um, a dual twenty one, a mass produced with a DNA that was that was good. You could get your custom, you know, unique stuff. But quick question for you: Do you know what the um, price point on that's going to be? No, not exactly. It'll be okay. it'll be around what what you usually pay for a DNA seventy five, probably about one thirty to one fifty US, maybe somewhere around there. Um, again, it's not it's it's that sort of stuff has to be organized by Dovco, who have the manufacturing price and they've got to get the distro price right and all the rest of it. There's a there's a lot of people don't realize how many steps there are. Um, there's a lot of steps. Product comes from the factory to your fucking shop. Um, so they think, oh, dope, they're making so much money after that. Well, no, like everybody's got to get their cut along the way. So yeah. I yeah. don't know about pricing exactly, but it'll be around that 150, I would say, I would expect. Does the guy who sits behind the computer actually throws it in CAD? The guy who sits at the fucking machines, yeah. CNC machines. There's the dude that's getting the guy who sits at the CNC machine coffee. He's got to get paid. <laughs> he wants a cut. He wants, he wants to have, and he was trying to get a cut on putting his name on the box. He's like, well, I brought him coffee without me. So I need my name in the box. Yeah, we figured yeah. that out over the last year, <laughs> yeah, year and a half we year. Figured, we figured yeah. that all that out. We figured it out very detailed. But, but it, it'll be it'll be a nice pay. reasonable price for a DNA seventy five. But it is yeah, one hundred thirty so bucks is right on point. We um we went in knowing that we wanted to do a DNA two fifty C uh, dual twenty one seven hundred. Um, pretty soon into that process, we thought, hey, not everybody's going to have the money for a DNA two fifty C. Not everybody sees the value in a DNA two fifty C. So we definitely want to do a cheaper version once we get the DNA out. Um, and so towards the end of the DNA, we started getting the, the, the non-DNA ready. Um, and then when we, when we decided we were going to do a mini version, we knew from the beginning we'd do a, uh, we'd do a, a DNA 75. Whether we do a, um, uh, a non-DNA 75, probably, but again, I'm not sure. It depends on how well. It, the other thing you've got to take into account is, are you going to do a second version if the first one is a flop? You know, if no one yep. fucking buys it. No point in planning for a second so yeah we'll see what the market says that's a good point that's that's solid point when asmos was talking about an rta and the RT, rdta and stuff like that and i was like well how about we just test the fucking barrage out first or yeah. even think about any of that shit but the so with your so i was talking to bbc uh beauty vikings customs with the odin the odin mm -hmm. bodies and trying to get them to dalpo and something like that is mm -hmm. that something you're going to do with this bad boy here is make some make custom bodies for them maybe look we wanted we did these these are fucking absolutely amazing gorgeous is, uh the acrylic body from uh from uh, bearded viking shout out to brent um and they look at look stunning and what we would planned to do was uh i think 150 of these just 50 of of uh three different colorways this is the unicorn and we had a like a purple green and white which we're going to call joker uh and then we had uh i think a red blue and white or something like that and um and we had planned brent had started doing the bodies because it's it's quite involved he's got to cast the bodies then he's got to um refine them like pull it, cut all the bits off and, and make them look good yep. um and then get them over to dovpo and then dovpo had to get uh new screws extra long screws because they're going into acrylic rather than metal and so the shorter screws weren't holding so you've got to get some special long screws so we're going to get all that done and, and have these available at expo in the uk just as an exclusive um little little sort of 150 units and any that we didn't sell at expo we were just going to send uh, to evolution um vaping in the uk so that people outside of Expo could buy a few of them but coronavirus fucking ruined that so yep. <laughs> um we may do that it, it again it's it's not a cheap process um to get them made get them finished and then get them done up just to do 30 of the barrages that that we did was 
it was a lot more than I thought it was going to be initially, but it was it's worth it. I'm still waiting on the shipment. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. it's something you can only do in small numbers, like 150, yep. but it'd be fun, super exclusive, and you know people have something special. But we want to do that if the expo happens again. Um, and we may end up if we don't do it in expo, we may just do 150 and and sell them to to shops or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's just got fucked up by this Corona thing. The, the expo <laughs> game right now looks like it's falling apart. Like as we speak. Well, even before all this happened, like. Um, cause I feel like it went from like this big, all this bad press with vaping and now into this, like no social gathering thing. So yep. from like one thing to another, but yeah. even before that, we saw a huge trend in it, like shifting into CBD. like hemp expos yeah. Yeah, yeah. and CBD well, and they all the kind of NBA combining it together. After, after the whole, uh, bootleg THC pod epidemic thing in the U S most of your, uh, expos were not going to go ahead anyway, because you yep. just weren't going to get the numbers there. And I remember NBE canceled theirs and said they were just doing the CBD one. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously that's off. Uh, ECC was getting shitter and shitter every year to begin with. I think, um, that was kind of going out, you know, on the down anyway. So I think that this not being able to have a, a, an event, it could do one of two things. It could, have a huge break we should you know because of this corona thing people may be busting to go out to a vape expo when they do put one on and they may get a really good response or it may do the opposite and because we haven't had one for so long and they've already been going kind of badly anyway in some places they may just not even bring them back at all which is a scary thought like a, you and i who've depended on it for the longest amount of time uh, going without it seems scary. Like that's, it's a, that's a lot of, not only just industry, it's a lot of people who are less and less people going to be vaping and less and people, more and more people going to be back to cigarettes. Or is it going to be one of those things where you have to kind of change with it? You have to go with it. What is your plan if that were to happen, bro? Well, I mean, the expos aren't necessarily a big part of what I do and how not, I do. It. Not just expos. I mean, just the vape culture and the community as a whole. Oh, I don't think that's going away. I think I think the community is still alive and well. Um, I think there's plenty of people watching all of us. There's there's heaps of heaps of reviewers, uh, and there's still plenty of people watching it. I don't think views have really dropped off or anything like that on YouTube. Um, maybe we're not growing because we're not getting the the uh, the spread across YouTube in terms of seeing getting new yep. people to see us. Um, but I don't think the community, especially in places like the UK, I'm quite lucky in that a lot of my viewers are in the UK. Yep. And because their government's so pro-vaping, um, yep. their events are still doing, like Expo is still doing really, really well. Every every show and Expo is still either better than the one before it or, uh, you know, equal to it. Um, Germany's Hall of Vape is still kicking ass. Um, Let's say if Germany seems to be solid as fuck. Yeah, just, so Europe, Europe in general, I think, um, in most places, depending on unless you're in a country that has kind of, and there's there's rare places in Europe that that haven't been pro vaping, um, but I think generally in Europe and the UK, it's alive and well, and it's doing really really good. Um, I think the Middle East, it, it, the market over there is is growing. I was going to be going. Bahrain is pretty big. That's one of the places. Dubai. I had no idea about that even had a vape culture. And uh, yeah, dude, I've got guys that I didn't even know that have been watching my my videos for years in in um in Saudi Arabia and and Dubai and places like that. So there's a, a an emerging market, a particularly different sort of market in the Europe uh, in um in in the Middle East and in Asia. It's much more of a status thing because cigarettes are yes. so cheap over there. People don't smoke because they save money in the in your in Asia. They smoke because they, it's a status thing. It's it's yep. you know, um, I have a, a high tier who doesn't like to be even mentioned publicly, but he's a, without going too far into it, we had FaceTimed over Snapchat once. I think I told you about this. He, he was sent, started sending me pictures from Tokyo, from like all over the place. I was like, Where, what the fuck do you do for a job? And he's like, my dad owns, so I don't even remember the, the name of the company, some company. And then started sending me, I started watching his Snapchat stories. This dude's getting, he paid more for shipping to get the barrage to Kuwait than yeah. I would pay in a, a month's, I don't know, <laughs> worth of, of anything. Yeah. And I'm like, why does it cost so much? He's, I'm in a war zone. I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah, dude. And he's starts, I checked out his Snapchats and he's pulling out these fucking Jordans, like the every color of every Jordan that has ever existed. And I'm like, can you adopt me? And then, <laughs> you be my sugar daddy <laughs> seriously and uh this other dude from bahrain we were talking about and he's like if you so fancy food over there is like if you could find a good mexican place or a good like uh thai place because it's it's in the middle of fucking nowhere in a desert 
and they've got money. The one, at least the ones that I've talked to, not all of them. Well, I mean, it's this. There's there's a lot of money. There's a lot yep. of poor people in 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 places like that as well. But huge yeah, there's, divide. there's a huge market that's growing yep. in places like Asia and the Middle East. So I think yeah. you're gonna see for sure. U.S. It's not like on the decline, but you've just been hit by so many different governments in so many different states. Stop. It's definitely having an impact on the U.S. market. Um, it's not growing uh, as like it was. I don't think it's gonna go away. There's no way they're gonna get rid of it. Um, but it's certainly stifling the growth for sure in the U S it's gone away in a, in a few places that I, like just like think of, there's a couple of counties in Indiana, one County, in Indiana that I can think of off the top of my head where vaping outside is illegal. And, uh, one of my buddies who makes his e-liquid for my mom, like he's the one that makes her specific tobacco that she likes was ticketed for vaping outside of his job. He yeah. works at, he's, he's a manager at a hotel and they ticketed him. Meanwhile, he's in a smoking section of the hotel, like yeah. outside. And was given crazy. a crazy it's a, and that's, that's a, a whole that's county fucked up shit and that's definitely going to have an impact on certain areas yeah uh, and it's sure. and as a whole like you said i don't think it's gonna, it, it sure is fuck not going anywhere for me i'm mm-hmm. still here i'm still reviewing shit the the amount of packages have slowed up you and i talked about it the other day from yeah. china the, it's it's still, which is natural you know covid etc plus you have the chinese holiday which which a lot of shit got backed up during then too but i've just saw influx packages on their way from you know dhl which is phenomenal yeah, and things are just taking longer as well to yep. get here. Um, the ship, they're still sending stuff out, but it's just taking two weeks to get here instead of two or three yep. days. I had a um, list. So there's that, and, you know, we're, we're in a weird, un, un, you know, unprecedented time. So I'm not so concerned about the amount of packages coming through. That, that's going to, you know, and yep. if it means that China slows down a little bit for a little while, it's probably not a bad thing <sighs> just to have a few less products, I mean, a few less pods coming out. Um, Seriously. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But it's what are you gonna, vaping out right now? Out. What positive are you vaping out right now? This is the urine. I'm on the urine. Still a fan okay. of the urine. Uh, I, I dropped it. mine in the ocean when I was fishing on Kangaroo Island, so I'm happy I have another one again. <laughs> I had a buddy drop his Miko in the fucking ocean in Mexico, and it still worked. We dried it out. I don't know. A couple hours later, it was still rocking. Like till this Oh day. yeah, I was I was in a spa with Grim in New Zealand. Like in a in a in a hot tub in a jacuzzi, oh. you might say, <laughs> and um and I, I I had it around my neck on the chain and I I got down in the spa and it went down in the water for about ten seconds and I came back I was like oh fuck I took it out and I just swung it on the chain, <laughs> try and <laughs> water out of it. I left it for fifteen minutes and it was fine. Still it working now. Still got it. It didn't taste like old man semen in a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like Grim Green's fucking hot tub bowls. Gross. <laughs> That's horrible, bro. How so? What were you doing before YouTube? Um. So before I started YouTube, I was well. As I started YouTube, I was working as a bicycle mechanic, so just fixing bikes. You know, is that something you were planning on doing for forever? Or? Uh, I'm, I'm one of those, like kind of no plan guys just take life's opportunities as they come. Um, exactly. it seems, seems to have worked out. All right. But yeah, I just, I, I was working in his bike shop. I love bikes. I love being a bicycle mechanic. Um, it was a lot of, a lot of fun. I, you know, I love the talking and behind the camera and stuff, but I love doing stuff, you know, with my hands as well. So I, I was, yeah, kind of just like, maybe I'll be a bicycle mechanic for the rest of my life, whatever, who knows. Um, but then I got a job working at my mates, uh, you know, vape company in the warehouse and then looking after the retail store when they opened that up. Um, and then after a while, it just got too much with trying to do videos uh, full time and, and a job full time. So I had to transition and I was lucky enough to be able to do that into, into YouTube. So that's what I've been doing now for two and a half years. That's beautiful. That's two, two only two and a half years though. Full time. Like full- obviously I've been doing the channel for nearly six years. Um, yep. but, uh, yeah, it's been two and a half years that I've been sort of full time with the YouTube so I've been very blessed that uh, I was able to, to transition and, and actually make enough income. Uh, and that's all thanks to, to my Patreon. So thank you guys for, for doing that. 100%. Particularly in the early days, um, it gave me the confidence when, when I was bringing in an income from there to be able to say, all right, actually leave a job that's a guaranteed pay each week to, uh, to a yep. life of, you know, hopefully make it. I was on the verge of, I was on the verge of quitting uh, before I did Patreon. And once Patreon, and I still can't like I still have a hard time believing like that that amount of people support 
the yeah, I couldn't believe it in the early days. It. I was surprised and nervous. Yeah. And then once it kind of, it, it equaled the, the level of income that I was making from the shop. And I was like, that gave me the confidence to, to know that I had the same amount. I could cover my bills. Um, and then and then it just continued. So yeah, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for the support of my Patreons now, but particularly in the early days, um, just to give me that confidence to make that jump. Yep, 100%. So thank you guys. Appreciate all of you fucking dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a question for you. What do you, what do you like as a family? What do you guys do when you're not working? When you like, when you guys are just like the four of you together, what are you guys doing? We're like just a regular family, man. We go to the parks. We play with the kids in the parks. My son plays uh, soccer. I play soccer. So, um, you know, we've got our training and our game. So if we're not out on a Sunday at eight o'clock in the morning in the freezing cold, standing on a soccer pitch, just fucking you know, <laughs> waiting for him to do his thing. Um, so we're doing that kind of stuff. Um, what else? What else? I don't know. Just usual family shit, man. Hanging around the house. Yeah. It Go to sounds Ikea. Like, yeah, I was going to say like the Costco, the Ikea, the soccer, the, it's all. Our son's calling me. I have to answer because those will freak out. That's like super similar to exactly the kind of stuff that we're doing when we're not around at the park playing soccer. The only thing is, is they only busy, play soccer man. for like three months out of the year. It's not warm enough here any other time. They can only mm -hmm. play soccer from like June to September. Oh, so you guys play in the, in the winter. That's summer here for us. Oh, there's summer here. Of course, it's our winter. We always play in the winter. You do? Yeah. You guys play all. So what is the season like over there? Like, what is your winter like? Uh, so it gets down to, oh, I'm trying to think in American Fahrenheit. Alexa, everyone's going to get fucking set off now. What is 15 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? This might answer your question. 15 degrees Celsius. <laughs> okay. So... 59 Fahrenheit oh. is like a cold winter day, 15 degrees Celsius. It might get down to like 50 during the day and like a really cold day. It might be like 45, but it, that's, that's not cold for Americans. Like for, not for, even a little bit. That's like yeah. a nice winter day for us. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, when it gets down <clears throat> to, to 45, 50, I'm yep. like freezing. I hate the cold. So we still, we're playing soccer in, in that. Cause it's not yeah. snowing. We don't get snow where I am. <laughs> yeah. Our oldest was hitting the youngest with a sharp metal object and then making fun of him because because he said stop and he went nah. So we have two boys that are uh nine and seven that are okay. managing their themselves upstairs. Yeah, they're just <laughs> they're just at that peak like competition age where yes. they're yes. just like trying to outdo each other and hurt each other. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. <laughs> Until somebody's not about it anymore and then the tattling starts. Yesterday Little Nas grabbed tongs and scorched a hot Cheeto in the fire and gave it to Rocky because he said, now it's a hot Cheeto. And then Rocky <laughs> ate it and then wondered why his, his mouth was on fire from it was a, a cold, burning, hot, hot Cheeto. It's like the typical oldest and youngest child. Yeah, everything has happened. to be tested by the youngest. Oh, that's like, I remember when I was that age and my sister's two years younger than me and we lived on a farm like we were country kids. So we had electric fences. And like, it was always that fun trick. If you're wearing your rubber boots, you can go and just touch the electric fence. And you're like, yeah, yep. look at me. I can touch the electric fence. And my sister was doing that. And then I was like, take off one of your rubber boots. And, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, Bleh. and then because you know, when you get hit with an electric shock, it feels like someone punched you. Yep. So she well, I thinks know. that I hit her and then is going to mom and it's them hit me. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> she did it to herself in the electric fence. Yeah, which I told her to do. <laughs> yep. Sounds you just have to leave that part out of it. Yeah. Sounds very similar which to I about did. our daily life here. That's good. I remember one time watching Little Nas push. So he goes, Rocky, I dare you to jump off the steps into the into the pool. And as he got to the top step, he, Rocky got his right foot stuck underneath the ladder on the top rung and his ass pushed him. The problem is that luckily I was fucking there. Rocky couldn't back up because his right foot was still stuck under the ladder. Which is scary. That's the type of shit that I I tell him. Like you could fucking kill your little brother. Yeah. Which sounds funny now, but it's not. Oh, it's right. scary as a parent when you come out and you realize you're like, my kid could have just killed my other kid. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, <laughs> which sounds like it takes care of the problems on its own, but it doesn't. No. How old are your kiddos? Uh, so Blake's just turned nine, and Evie's about to turn four. Okay, that's nicely se separated in age. Yeah, it's it's a. I mean, you either want them 
real close like you two have got where they're they're close together and, and they can relate and bounce yep. off each other yep. or a nice gap of four and a half years five years for them because the older one he knows the limitations with with evie he knows that he can't just like throw her across the room um mm -hmm. so he's re he's amazing with her he's he's such a good big brother he like he takes care of her it's it's one of those things where you're like oh He's such a like well-adjusted, thoughtful kid, and then he does shit to piss me off, and I'm just like, "What the <laughs> fuck, man!" Like, you're so loving and caring, and then he's like muttering under his breath when I tell him to do something. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's, it's yep. horrible that way because our oldest is not the nice. He's not the nicer one. He's he's typically the more of a he's, he's more the of a more dick. thought one. He has a lot more thought into his actions. So. Yes, he's he's a bit more. He's a bit of a dick, but he does everything we ask him to do, but he does it in a, in a sarcastic way. Oh, the sarcasm. Yeah. The sarcasm. I'm like, where did you get that? My, <laughs> my mom is like, my mom is a, mom's a, a asshole in, a, in the best, most loving possible way. She's sarcastic. She'd be, she'd make a perfect Brit or a perfect Aussie. And I just, I'm trying not to be sarcastic. I try to just be very straightforward about shit. And my son is not about that life. But our youngest is way nicer than our oldest, but doesn't listen to a fucking word we say. Nothing. Yeah. If we ask him to take the trash, I was like, all right. We'll do it. Nope. I'll do it. I'll do it when you don't ask me to do it. That's that type of, I just took my socks off. It is not good. How do your feet stink? Yep. I can smell them right now. <laughs> it's a horrible idea. I just took my shoes off for the first time in like nine or 12 hours. Bro, so you you skate, correct? Not really anymore. Like I, I used to when I was in, in high school for a bit. And then I just didn't skate for so many years that I, I got way out of practice, lost all my good balance. So now I just roll around. I don't really do tricks and shit much anymore. I just roll. Plus, when I started like skating again with my son, I went out and I was like doing some ollies and kick flips. And you know, when you, you know, you just fall over and you don't hurt yep. yourself. You just fall on the ground. That's the pro I used to and be I was good. like, I felt fine. I was like, yeah, whatever. I can fall on the ground. I can, you know, knock myself down. But then I got home a couple of hours later and I was like, oh, my fucking neck is killing me. <laughs> like, I was just like, I felt like an old man just sore from a little bit of skating. I so realized my age, same, same thing. I realized my age when I hop on my bike and like just yesterday I started grooming the, the, the jump and I was grooming the jump and I dirt bike, by the way, dirt bike. Yeah. And when I, when I put my foot and I look back at my helmet and I'm like, I should really probably grab my helmet, grab my helmet. And before I hit the jump, I had to think about what could possibly happen. If I fuck up this time, yeah. I'm not 23 anymore. And so it took it. Yeah. And the thing is, is I got mates that still skate and they skated all through their twenties and they're fine because they kept skating. But when you, when you don't keep the, keep it going for, for most of your twenties, then yeah, you can't just get back on that skateboard and, and not feel the pain. <laughs> no. So I just roll around these days. I don't do anything too, too crazy. Uh, the last time I seriously skateboarded would have been, I was, I was 17 or 18. And if I think about it, first of all, I can't skate in work boots. It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I own is work boots. But I would like, I would love to get back. I just found a couple of vintage Santa Cruz boards and I hung them up, hung up in the garage. I'm like, this is my little Bogan area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, now I got the skate, I got the collection, which I started maybe sort of 10 years ago or something, collecting a few of my favorite like bands when they released limited edition boards. Yep. Um, but uh, there's very little rolling around and, and very, very, t very mild skating <laughs> from me. But Do my son's out there; he loves it. And then, so I just really want to see. I, I mainly got a board again to start rolling around with him, so that encourages him to skate. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I want him to keep skating when I didn't. I want him to keep going with it. That's how I feel about my boy. If they both picked up, you, if they both picked up motocross, like I would, I could probably stop hitting jumps like i would if, if they would i wish that they would get into something i really really enjoyed but everything i like they they enjoy it they'll they ride That's their the dirt bikes you're gonna, and stuff. you're gonna try and stop yourself from pushing your agenda yeah, on your kids exactly I, I, but I, it would it's like my dream if they both fucking raced and got a ktm sponsorship and fucking <laughs> grew up to be <laughs> like make, that'd be a proud <laughs> papa moment yeah right like <laughs> yes my kids are factory racers but I'm, one of them's a gamer and the other one thinks he's a gamer. So I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> hey, look, as long as they don't cut all of their other options off gaming, if he, if he keeps just doing it a little bit and maybe he, even if he just gets into a position where he's streaming his games and people are paying exactly. him. Exactly. We have an coding yeah, club at school. Yeah. Streamer. You yeah. don't need to go and win, you know, e-games titles, but if you can get a following just doing games. Well, exactly. Like We're the first generation 
that probably told their kids when he's like, well, well I just want a game. I'm like, good. Yeah, well, he's in he's in third grade and is taking a coding. But you still got to go to school. Yeah. You still got to yep. get an education. You still got to like keep your options open. Hey, if you want to yep. go and do a trade, like go for it. Wish I did a yep. trade. Yeah, um, but don't don't stop gaming. Like that's definitely that's definitely a thing you can do. Mm-hmm. I've done. Speaking of trades, so did you go to school? Yeah, I went to school, but uh, I I should have done a trade. Like uh, I should have gone and done metal fabrication or become a carpenter or or, or done something like that. Um, but my parents were always like, you know, you're a smart kid, academics, academics. And I was like, I don't want to be a school. I fucking, I hate being in a classroom. I don't want to be in an office. I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't that, traje- like- that trajectory is dangerous. Years. I didn't yep. like it. What did you go for? What was your original master's or your, whatever, what your degree? Well, so you I finished year 12. I just did, uh, like the usual shit, the subjects that I wanted to do, politics, history, design, shit like that. I liked history and politics. I hated, I'm good at maths, but I hated it. Um, mm-hmm. English I wasn't great at. Um, but I didn't know what I want to do. Like I got out of, u- out of school and, and I didn't want to go to uni cause I wasn't sure what I wanted to study. So I was like, well, I'm not going to fucking spend all this money or rack up a huge debt studying something that I don't know what I want to do. So yeah. I just started working. And like I said, like I've kind of been that person that's like, I'll just see what opportunities come along the way. And when I see a good one, I'll, I'll, I'll try and make full, uh, advantage of it, but I don't, I'm not really great at plans. <laughs> That's me the whole hundred percent. I I can't do plan. The my dad's the same way. My dad's academic. My dad's very very. He's got a shit ton of degrees and masters and all that stuff. And that's I have my whole life. I've I love working with my hands. The same thing you were just talking about with being a bicycle mechanic or being a tradesman. I've been and have been a carpenter for. I was gonna say he sits in the studio and records and edits all day, and he's like, "I gotta get outside. Yep. I yeah. gotta get in the garage. I gotta start working with my hands." Yeah, because if I don't, I'll go fucking crazy. And if I did go on the trajectory I was going for engineering and shit, uh, audio engineering and sitting in studios, it's something I thought that I wanted, and I got to meet famous people. I got to, I go, I was signed to a record label. I love that. I loved performing. Come to find out, I hated sitting in studios. All I wanted to do was was perform and yeah. party. That's it. Just drink, perform, and party, and get paid. But that was also that my liver had other plans. Yeah, as simple as that. But I can so totally harder to like actually get that to work off the ground. We got we were getting paid like we were, but I was probably gonna have to save up for a liver transplant. Basically, it was no bueno. Or all that money you were getting paid was then going into the in, bottle of into, vodka. Into bottle of vodka, yeah. thousands yeah. of dollars. Like Jesus, how much money did we spend this weekend? Whose tab did we pick up? The whole bars? That's not normal. <laughs> you're not supposed to get paid as a band member or as an artist and then all of a sudden it's gone at the same place you got paid from mm. that's dope though so if you, you said you wish you would have went in the trade is there a reason why you would have went into metal fabrication um yeah i don't know what it was but I, I had a mate that was a metal fabricator and um i think i don't know i think i think i saw stuff like forged in fire i think forged in fire was like <laughs> fuck yeah i want to make fucking stuff out of metal Yep. Like I still, I, I still have like a, a goal to like one day when I have, um, you know, spare money and spare time just to get equipment to do that kind of shit, get a fucking lathe, get a, get a welder and, and just do shit. Cause, um, yeah, growing up on a farm, like I was always playing with tools and building shit and, and making things. And then I got into bicycle mechanics and, and, you know, the mechanic side of it and the tools, um, and it just made me realize I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I should have, when I was 16, cause I, I didn't finish all of my subjects in year 12. Like I I hated school so much that I only ended up doing three subjects instead of five. So I don't actually have like a proper TER um, high school diploma as such. I have a few subjects that I finished. So I finished year 12, but I didn't actually get a qualification or whatever. So um, I should have in year 12 or year 11 dropped out of school and gone and done a trade. Like that would have been that because I just didn't know what I was doing for, for most of my until my kid came along until my first kid came along. I had no fucking direction. I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no real long term career plans. I was good at talking. I did sales for a few years uh, and then I got into bikes and stuff like that. Um, but I should have done something with my hands. That should have been what I did in, in year 12. And that's one thing I probably learned from my parents is rather than like, hey, go and get an education, go and do this. No, no, no. A kid should be focusing on their on their skills and what yes. they're passionate about. Because if you're good at something and you like it, you're gonna do well. Mm-hmm. But you could be a smart person and not want to do uni. You're not you're like me. I'm a smart per. I mean, I don't want to sound like fucking Trump here. I'm I'm very smart. <laughs> China, <laughs> China's not smart. I'm one of the smart. I'm I'm very smart. <laughs> but like, I'm not an idiot. I could have I could have gone to uni, but I didn't because I didn't want to. 
It's just not me sitting in a classroom. 150%. And what you said, anybody, and I, a lot of the patrons have, have kids, the the worst thing you could do is to like you were just saying is pushing a your agenda they can, they on your can children. Do what they want to do if, if they want. If it's, yeah. The biggest thing for me is is I don't care. Are we have we have a hard time with the youngest because he doesn't he doesn't have, have a passion a passion art art is his passion and which is a difficult thing to do a living at unless you yeah. do graphic design or things like that. but his like I'll tell you right now. His his personality and my personality are not the sit in a cubicle work for somebody else that. You know, so pay. I don't know if you guys are doing like the whole at home schooling thing, but we're trying yeah. to homeschool our kids right now because they can't go back. And like we our poor a little, little bit, but now they're back. Oh yeah, ours. We're done. We're done for it's the rest fuck, of the dude, year. It's the worst thing ever having your kids around the house and your oh my wife's God. trying to like keep them on task and keep him because he's got all this work from school and you're just like, oh. God. But like our we our seven it. year old is trying to do his math homework and he's like he's dancing with his butt and he's trying to I'm like how does this kid sit through a six hour day of school? Meanwhile, so, our oldest is doing times tables in his fucking head, yes. and he's like, "Why do I, I have to show my work if I know that if I know the answers?" Do you know how hard it is to explain to a child? You have to show your work. He's like, "I already know how to do it in my yeah, head. I know." <laughs> yeah. Not everyone's a human calculator, son. You have to show the teacher yes. that you went through this process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. No, I, I was the same. I, I hated that. I got bumped up into the advanced maths class when I was in year nine. And then I was like, oh, no, now I actually have to like try. Can you just yep. put me back in the normal maths class where I could just easily do it without trying? This is fucked. Yep. I was the same way. It's I, bizarre. I hate it. it's good. And my son's the same. He managed to go through six weeks, the first six weeks of term without completing any of his work in school and his teacher just hadn't like, cause we'd always needed to have a good communication with his teacher. Otherwise he just doesn't get his work done. So with his previous teacher, we had a good relationship. We'd check in with her regularly with his new teacher for the year. She just didn't have that relationship with parents and just let him not do work for fucking six weeks. Oh, and shit. Then we can we get called into school. We're like, why didn't anybody tell us that he's not doing this work? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no so kidding. We had to, at home, do six weeks worth of work. Oh, <laughs> that sounds that's like a, my <laughs> worst. That's a nightmare, nightmare right there. <laughs> so there's my love- poor wife trying to get him to do this fucking work that he hasn't done and he doesn't want to do it. And I was like, all right, now we're on top of things and we got to stay on his ass. We got to stay on his ass. Like I had to, I'd have someone stay on my ass at school mm. because otherwise I'm like, yeah. I'm like fucking Homer Simpson. Like, is that dog got a puffy tail? Here, puff. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's me. Yeah. Like, undiagnosed ADHD. Absolutely. Just, yeah. What's so going- oh, yeah. oh, what's going on over there? Is there a fight? Like, but that's also what makes us, that's legitimately what's, what makes us, I, I'm diagnosed, same thing, ADHD. And it, that's also what makes the videos what they I was are. I going to say, it's, it's what makes dude, people watch. My TikTok, like, so my favorite thing in the world to do is filming my TikToks for Snapchat. First, I put them on Snapchat and then I turn that into a compilation. And it's all DIY. It's all building. But, excuse me, it upsets the people. Well, 10% of those who've watched my TikToks or watched my DIY built on Instagram become furious with me because of the way I treat my tools. Like, stop the chaos. Just build it. I'm like, no, that's not what I do. I I don't even know what I'm building right now. Give me a second. And then I'll figure the shit out. But that's legitimately a huge portion of, of the online personality shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the who the fuck I would be if I wasn't ADHD. I'd be so yeah. bored. <laughs> so bored. Although your videos are really dude. I've been a fan of yours since late 2013, early 2014, something like that. It's since when someone told me that you shouted me out, like, who the fuck is this fucking asshole? And I clicked and I was like, uh oh. And I'm like, this dude's better at being me than I'm at being me. No, but I remember I found your videos and I was like, holy shit. It's like a fucking, it's like a crazy American Hispanic version of me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly, those are exactly my thoughts. It was like, this Australian fucker is better at me than doing me. I, I can't even explain it. It was like love at first cunt. I couldn't, I don't know how else to explain it. Hey, like, you dickheads. And I was like, I like this guy. Click subscribe. I just remember like watching him and you're like, okay. And then you just like jump cut, you slam a Red Bull. It's <laughs> like, this is great. <laughs> out of a trash can, out of a fucking trash can, I had that Red Bull. Oh yeah, yeah. you had that little trash can <laughs> yeah. cup holder thing. My youngest now has that and it's in his YouTube collection. So the other day we were talking about, um, he thought somewhere that, that I was going to quit YouTube. He's like, dad, please don't 
quit being a YouTuber, mostly because he just. What thinks am I going to tell my friends at school? That's exactly what he's. He's like, I know he's saying that because he tells he likes to tell his friends. My dad makes a living on YouTube, and then the, the other part he doesn't tell him is that they can't watch it, so he can't. He doesn't even know. He, I won't tell him the name of the fucking shit. But Blake got busted for because Claire looked on the search history on the iPad and Blake uh-huh. had looked up my channel and he knows that he's not allowed to watch my channel. He got in <laughs> oh god. If they watch the fucking Sunday live streams, we get swifty on this bitch. So our youngest, same thing on his iPhone, thesis himself came. It was spelled wrong, it was T-H-E-S-U-S himself on TikTok, but he had me on there and I was like, well, oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of that's kind of cool. I feel kind of cool about that. That video had like six hundred fifty thousand views on that one. Like, Fuck yeah, that's your daddy. But at the same time, they can't watch our live streams ever. No, <laughs> the four twenty one especially <laughs> because Mandy made me eat a gummy worm, and I'll tell you what I don't. I have the lowest tolerant tolerance for THC you can imagine. <laughs> if I look at weed wrong, I'm high for six months. <laughs> and it's not good i'll start and end stories that had nothing to do with and if you watch the 420 episode definitely started some stories that i didn't finish and started finishing stories that i never started <laughs> are you uh do you partake in the uh the devil's lettuce yeah i mean it's not legal in australia but uh you know that blows my mind that blows my mind hey you're shooting guns and so i'm a i'm a gun aficionado i love i love guns oh, love that's weapons. one thing i'm jealous of is you and your guns because oh. yeah, in australia obviously we had uh had port arthur back in in the 90s mm-hmm. and um and i owned that, that trigger because of that uh the, the hellfire i'd be ever since i found out about that i'm like my goal is to i want to own one of those triggers and i have one um i'm supposed to destroy it by 20 <laughs> what was the date 2021 2022 but there's That's a, a long compliance time period. Uh, no, because they just now remember when they did the bump stocks when Trump okay. did that a couple years yeah. ago. There's a specific amount of time, and now the Hellfire triggers are on the docket to be banned. What does the Hellfire well. trigger do? It's just a, it's another way of a bump stock, but it's all it is is a um, think of a coil. It looks just like a coil, but it's a spring like a clothespin yeah. sits behind the trigger, and as you pull forward, it just bop, 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 just like that. And oh, that's so what you was, just you just basically as you're reloading it's you masturbate yeah okay but um i think mine doesn't even work anymore it, it's just cool to have one so can you own guns yeah you can yeah so you can own, you can own guns but um you have to have a license obviously yep. um yep. and if you say if you're a farmer you can you can have you know guns for for farm use you got to mm-hmm. keep them all locked up obviously and and you know there's a registration inspection blah 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 um, if you want to have a handgun, for example, you've got to be a member of a club. Um, oh, okay. And it's probably a secondary, like it's not just a, a basic license. It would be then like a pistol license. You'd have to have it registered. Um, you'd have to be a member of a club. And then to have it at home, you you can either store it at the club, but it's probably easy to store at the club, or you'd have to keep it at home again in like a very specific locked up situation where the cops actually come inspect your safe. Oh, make sh- what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to have, but it like, was because of that uh, port, port. What was it Port Arthur? Again? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it, all, all in response to um to Port Arthur. Sorry, my cat is uh just. Oh, no worries. Affection if you me. think about and listen, I'm I'm not I'm not a gun toting fucking. Well, hang asshole. on a second. For anybody who doesn't know what that means, can you explain that? It was a mass shooting. Oh. In the nineties. Yeah, so Port Arthur was a mass shooting. We had I think twenty nine people killed. Um, so it was pretty big. It was pretty bad. But they um they they went basically the first thing they did was you know you had to get rid of all your rifles and, and unless you had a, a a legitimate use for it as a farmer or you're a member of a club, mm-hmm. then you had to hand them in. Um, and so now yeah it's it's pretty uncommon for an Aussie to own a gun unless you're a farmer or you're actually into guns and you and you. So I've got some mates that are members of clubs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's all very very restricted. So go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, so if you have a friend who is a part of a club and owns a gun, are you allowed to go with them to the club to shoot their gun or is that not? Uh, you can definitely go, like I could go to a gun range now and like pay and hire a gun and shoot in the range, oh, okay. even without a license. <clears throat> okay. cool. It's not my gun, obviously it's the, it's at, the, at yeah. the range. So you can definitely go and do that. I'm sure you okay. could use a mate's gun if you were again at a range mm-hmm. um, and you'd obviously, you know, paid and, and whatever else to, to shoot there. Um, and you know, if you're on a farm or whatever, you could. No one's going to know. You know okay, I've, yeah, I've been shooting yeah. plenty of times, but um, yeah. To I saw you. You had some pretty uh, heavy artillery. Hey, 
in New Zealand, those those shots of you in New Zealand. Oh yeah. So and then New Zealand's different. Shit. So New Zealand, they still have uh, much more like the U.S. freedoms. They've just brought in some newer restrictions after the recent shooting in in Christchurch um, at the mosque, but yep. they still haven't they haven't like taken the guns away kind of thing. New Zealanders still have um, plenty of, of freedom there. So yeah, my mates over there, he's got, you know, M16s, he's got fucking he's got this awesome 44 caliber rifle, like it's just yeah. it shoots like fucking slugs. Yep. Um he's got revolvers, he's got fucking Glocks, he's got um he's got ARs, he's got some really cool shit. And because it, like America, you can still see in Australia, nobody has a suppressor. You cannot have a suppressor um under any circumstance. Um, which is dumb because a suppressor yeah. is not about like shooting someone without them knowing it's about protecting your ears. It's, it's a my, safe, yeah. my nine, like if people realize that suppressors, I've it's got a, Mac, yeah, my Mac 11 is you, sh you still have to wear ear protection, but you don't have to wear OSHA approved fucking negative 78 decibel. It's you can, and plus those headphones, I don't own them. Those headphones are 300 and some bucks. And I yeah. would rather spend 300 bucks on ammunition and just buy my regular ISO tunes for 60 bucks off Amazon and use that with my suppressor or like my suppressor for the 22. My 22 sounds like a BB gun, but I also have federal tax stamps that I have to go through. It's a six, it's three to six month waiting period just to get your, your suppressor approved. And you have to only use that suppressor with the gun you intend that to gun. use it for, yeah. Yeah, which, which is bullshit. I would rather there be a. Is it just so like people can't hear you shoot? Like no, no, no. It's it's so it's it's to protect your because it's. Still I know, loud. but like when they say that you can't own, they think that they... people are gonna like commit it's crimes. A... I was gonna they say otherwise like... wouldn't have got it. Like the thing is, is nobody in the history of like I don't know. I maybe I'm being general here, but I don't think there's any crimes that have been committed with a gun in the last ten years that would have only happened because they had a suppressor. Like there's nobody's getting away with a crime because they had a suppressor. You can still hear it. Like people use for so I, I used to have the statistics on this, Mike. If you want to help me out with suppressor um, uh, crimes, so the biggest thing that I've seen people use for suppressors is a towel and duct tape. Those yeah. people are probably going to commit a fucking crime. But what they're doing nine times out of 10 is breaking through locks, specifically in storage lockers, yeah. but they're not committing murders. Nine out of 10 yeah. murders are committed out of uh, not heat of passion, but like in the moment, like it wasn't planned. It yeah. Wasn't no planned one's like, hang on, let me go and sneak yeah. up on this person. And pew, pew. Like it doesn't yeah, work. Exactly. Like that. And in the movies, when you, when you hear a gun go, pew, yeah, like that, that's not real. That doesn't happen. <laughs> I don't care exactly. how good your suppressor is. You have a fucking diamondback suppressor costs two grand costs more than the gun you bought it's still, it's just a lot quieter. That's it. Yeah. It's like 10, 15 decibels difference. Unless you have a 22 with an oil filter. And I was I, say, it makes it. So somebody said, I have a problem with argument you, because it makes it quieter. Well, yes, it makes it quieter, but like he has been shooting his like 22 in our backyard. And he's like, does that sound like anything? And I'm like, I mean, it's definitely I a gun. Still hear you shoot a gun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's just the neighbors aren't going to be quite as concerned, yeah. but. We're not, dude. We're not saving anybody by banning suppressors or limiting no. suppressors. You're just hurting people's ears. So Here's New the, Zealand's great like that. You can still do it. One of the the things, and, I, and I'll be completely upfront and honest. I, listen, I love the Second Amendment. I love guns. Thank you, Mike. Probably posted the chat or the the link in the private chat. Could I have to check that out? Um, baby, you want to look that? I want to make sure we get our stats right because otherwise we're gonna have some. It's in the. Oh, never mind. You can't check it out. So with not suppressors but i am i have lots of guns they're all most of them are registered because in minnesota you don't have to register them if, if you buy from private to private yeah and, um, i give you 20 bucks you give me a handgun but that's all we need um but i when i sell guns i make sure to always have a, a i get their license number uh their their correct address the whole nine yards only because it's to cover my ass yeah because come to find out there's a law that was it's it's a gray area where if someone if you sell so if i sell mandy a nine millimeter or a 45 or a 40 doesn't matter what it is and she commits a crime within one year of that purchase you are now held accountable wow uh, it's which is scary which is a scary thing i've sold my nephew like a lot of shit now granted he now has his license which makes it a lot easier to, to deal with his uh per permit to purchase um but the shit that I understand is like, so I used to have bump stocks. When I first went to the range with a bump stock and I emptied a hundred round magazine in under, I don't know, 30 seconds. Brrr, I was like, I looked at it and I was like, this is definitely not necessary. 
I cannot think <laughs> of any situation yeah. ever where I need to unload a hundred rounds in seconds. Yeah. Is it, was it fun to have? Yes. But when the laws came through and, and, and kind of did away with them, I was like, I kind of get it. I don't really have a good argument to own shit like that. I just yeah, don't. No, exactly. You can't, you can't justify it. No, there's what are you going to protect your house against an army? There's no reason to have that. I hundred round magazines. I had, I, I used to, I sold them, but I used to have hundred. I can't I mean, even if tell you. You can't hit the fucking deer in four no. or five. What's like you go back to the rage, dude? If you're exactly. popping off 30 fucking rounds to hit one deer. <laughs> to be fair, I was firing my AK 47. So I'm going inter- to I'm going to uh, interrupt real quick. There are almost a million silencers sell- sold in the co- in the country uh-huh. and there's 44 crimes a year and only 6 of them are involved with silencers. Boom. Or is six. 44 yeah. crimes per year, only 6 involved. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like it, it's yeah. the the idea when Australia banned suppressors was just it's super dumb. Super dumb. Makes no it's sense. It's silly. Cuz my brother just Zados, he just says because fucking America screams freedom <laughs> so, bum, 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 bum. so that is probably the, the but the, that's the truth that's the only i've traded oh man if, if i could bro bogan if you ever came to minnesota in particular we have one of the most dopest bro gun shows on gun shows you all you need in this state is cash what do you yeah. want you want that's a 50 crazy. cal anti-aircraft dude my buddy my buddy t i'm not gonna say his name i don't know if he ever wants to mention that publicly but He's got a a a 21 inch barreled, I think that's what it is, uh, 50 caliber anti aircraft rifle, bro. <laughs> the thing sits on a tripod that looks like table legs, like it's. Like, and I'm like, have you ever used it? He goes once. <laughs> like you paid <laughs> one $6, time thousand dollars to use that gun. He's like, well, the rounds are twelve dollars a piece. I'm I was like, gonna say, I'm sure he shot it. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah. Twelve dollars a fucking round. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Holy if you, shit. If you've got yourself an iPad, the length of the round, it's not quite as long, but the length of the round is about this. Fuck. It's, that's it's, insane, dude. It, and it's one of those things where I'm like, where did you buy it? He goes, Fleet Farm. And I was like, Jesus, at the hardware store? And that's when I went and bought my AK at Fleet Farm. So, that's I mean, fucking nuts. It just, to Australians, that's crazy, dude. So, like, it's if you, crazy here. If I you wanted imagine. to buy a gun, if you had a license and were registered at a club and all these things, where do you go to purchase a gun? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, there are gun shops. There, there are oh, gun okay. shops. They're, they're okay. not, uh, there's not heaps of them, obviously, because there's just not the demand for it. But you, you go to a gun shop, um, you, can, you, can, you can look at the guns. But you, you can't guns. just, like, walk into a hardware store and purchase Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you're not going to, like, there's no Bunnings Warehouse or a, or a Walmart equivalent where you can get a gun. It's a gun shop, and they sell guns. Even, even your camping stores won't sell guns. Like, your outdoor camping stores won't sell guns. It would be very much a specific gun. Okay. We have gone into Fleet Farm or, and, or Walmart. I was going to say Walmart. And we've Did walked they, out with dog there, food. I remember watching a Michael Moore documentary, and there was an episode where you opened a bank account, and they gave you a fucking gun. Like, yes. a legit. <laughs> <laughs> you open the bank account and they're like here just so in case you want to rob us later on like here's that <laughs> oh, and God. it's you don't think about how ridiculous the laws are we have one of the most craziest amazing freedom-filled constitution because if you come here everyone they're going to republicans in particular are going to convince you that we have no freedom and this is a communist run country and that we need to be anarchists essentially except yeah. for trump fully so they love they love themselves the trump but at the same time, we've gone and picked up dog food and a AK-47 pistol in the same in the same place, same store, same same checkout, same checkout. Yeah, <laughs> walked out. Ah, and it which was insane. is great, but I don't necessarily it's, like, it's not necessary. Well, that's I, don't think it, I, I just don't understand. Like, you can still have your freedoms, but like, can't you just make it a bit harder for a mentally ill person to get a gun? Like, that's a yeah, that's a hard that's a hard question to answer though. What do you, because you, you and I are both diagnosed ADHD. Is that considered mentally ill or is that considered what? A superpower? No, that's fine. Like if you've got a history of schizophrenia or you've, you've fucking, yep. you know, you know, serious mental health, you know, stuff. I mean, it's, it just doesn't, it, there's got to be a few checks in there, but then, then everyone goes, oh, there's too many checks. That's infringing my freedom. How is it? You just have to like be checked. How's that infringing on your freedom? You're well, still get, getting like, it. 
Yep. They're just going to check that you're not a criminal. Like, I don't know. So in order to purchase here, at least in this state, because there's uh, like you have states like Florida, which you know, they'll just they'll give you if you, you just left the mental hospital, they'll give you a gun because hey, you got to be safe out there. You know, <laughs> you <gotta> but be <laughs> here it's uh, so my my permit to 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 carry um, in, in Minnesota, you can carry anything on your body, but it has to be on your body of any doesn't matter what you could have a a fucking sniper rifle on your back plus an AK plus an AR and two yeah, the, the, the open carry thing blows my mind. I get it. You know, it's, it, it's safer to have it visible, but it's still just crazy when you see someone walk into a fucking Walmart with a rifle it, strapped to their back. That doesn't happen here. That, that, uh. But he, We've had this conversation before because he's got to carry, he's got a permit to carry. And there's been a couple of times we've been out in public and he conceals to carry. Yep. And there's been a couple of times we've been out in public. A security guard has come up and been like, Hey, Somebody saw it. I'm going to have to ask you to put it away wink, or, wink, nudge, nudge. or like, I'm going to walk away. I came up here and told you to put it away, but I'm going to walk away, whatever. Okay. And so what does that mean? We, that means that he's not like somebody like a, a he wants civilian. you to keep it hidden or he wants you to keep it open. He well, wants hidden. hidden. He wants me to go back he, to the car and put it away. Somebody which is came oh. to him with concern. So he is coming up to him to say, Hey, okay. somebody approached me. So now I have to approach you. Right. But he was very awkward but, about it because he carried two. But then we've had this conversation. Like if you see somebody walking around and you see like a gun sneak out of the back of their pants. That it's worries way me more than get your st- Yes. Yeah. Then just that like, way, like when I see when I see the dude yes. with the cowboy hat and the fucking lamb chop mustache and he's <laughs> yes. got a revolver. <laughs> just on like his outside. Head, you know? Yes. Just like hanging on his pants. No, I'll like, be yeah, it. He's he's just a real American dude, likes to keep yeah. his stuff on him. That's fine. Yeah, that's... But when the dude's got it tucked in his fucking pants. Yep. That kind of worries me. Like you're pulling it out, then when it's like while you're hiding it, right? Yes. For me, and I get the dumb bitches concern, but I'm here with I have my my beautiful wife, my beautiful children. Now, granted, I look the way I do. I'm wearing a fucking is my cardio t-shirt. Like, sh- <laughs> like I don't look like the guy that should be carrying a, a Smith and Wesson 40 on my backside plus yeah. my pocket my pocket uh, 380, but. If you see that in public, just know I had to, I went and got a license. It's not yeah, just exactly. all you're responsible about it. Exactly. I had, I have to go to, I went to, you know, hours of class. I had to prove that I could shoot. I had to prove that I know not just a, an automatic, but I had to prove exactly. that I have a yeah. revolver. You got an open and, carry. You, you've yeah. gone and got that. You've taken responsibility. The other thing is if I was a police officer, I would like to know who's got a gun in a mall. I got uh, fucked who's up. By, got by, by, yep. I, I got almost full-blown frisks uh, by a group of cops in a gas station because i walked in they didn't know the, the cops here don't know the law so uh, he's like and he was rushing Sto, he's like, what are you doing with the gun and they all all this i'm at the atm i'm like i'm clearly not robbing the place it's my, <laughs> my card and i'm like i'm not they're like what do you got the gun and i i fucking i'm like listen buddy my permit to carry is in my wallet which is in the same side as my pistol i'm not grabbing my wallet you grab yeah. my wallet yeah female cop behind me and another big old corn fed white boy behind me and i'm like you grab my grab my wallet and he grabbed it and he saw the permit to carry and the license he's like you can't have open carry why do you have a gun I'm like you can't ask me that question you are legally you cannot ask me i'm not doing committing crime give me you guys saw my license and that yeah. per the law says if they see your pistol they can ask for your license and that is it now he said you can't have open carry i'm a i'm a i'm a smart ass i have the law in my car at all times yeah. in, a, in a bright yellow folder. So yeah. I'm like, officer, please follow me to my car. And I open, I shouldn't even said that, but I open up the car door. I grab the, the folder and he goes, well, not everybody knows about this. You're going to get yourself killed, bro. You're a police officer. That's the only job you have is to know the law. You should know this. That's the only job you have. That's it. Yeah. But of course, after that, it was an apology and, and I went on my way. Yeah. Well, see that, that to me is safer than, than having people just tucking shit in their, in their trousers and, and not knowing it's there. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. The other part though, is that it makes you a target. So like if you're in a, in a bank yeah. and you're in line, the other issue that you think have to think about is, if or they if they, the place. yeah, they're going to see you and you're going to be popped immediately. You're, you're a threat. You're, you're a liability for sure. Mm-hmm. Which is bro. Do you guys watch Ozark? No, I've heard about it. Everyone seems to be talking about this Ozark show. I just want, all, all I want to do is show you what quintessential America is because Missouri's not the South, but they have Southern accents. 
Okay. And that's and that's real life. So Missouri is not the South. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. So, south of St. Louis, maybe a little bit, but we had neighbors growing up that had thick, rural Alabama accents from Missouri. And I guess the only reason why I bring this up now is because the way they treat guns in that show is very quintessentially where they how they treat guns most places here specifically in the fucking midwest i don't know what it is i don't either because mike we've had this conversation with him before yeah like you guys have way different rules out there in california than we do you guys can't even ship ammo california is really restrict on the guns isn't it yep so is new york city so is chicago all the places you want to carry guns they don't let you mike can you have a conceal and carry there in california you can but it's on a uh it's on a, a needs basis and it depends on the city you live in. Some cities that are more conservative, it's a little easier to get um, get concealed permit. Hold on. It's a little easier go. to get uh, concealed permits. Um, I know after the, uh, the San Bernardino shooting happened, uh, there was like a, 26 month uh waiting period holy to shit. get one in california yeah wow. that's that's when shit really started going sideways here with that and you guys have a couple of loop well you did you had that one week or whatever it was where you can buy well, whatever that, you want and then the last week um the uh the court struck down the uh the background checks for ammunition in california Good. so uh that lasted all of about 48 hours and then oh, I got Bogan, Mike, Mike Bogan. How you doing, Mike? Nice Bogan. to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. I met you at ECC a couple years ago. Yeah, why don't you remember that, Sam? What the fuck is wrong? I actually, to be honest, my camera is in the front of Mike's uh, screen. Oh, yeah, I remember oh. you, man. How are you? <laughs> yeah. like, I'm looking at my camera, and I can see you two above it, but then Mike is behind the camera, but now I've moved it. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, so it's one of those things, man. It's, it's, it's like if Dapo started selling gun parts. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question for you, Bogan. What are you drinking? Uh, I have a Rover Henty Street uh, okay. Pale Ale. Pale Ale. Is that your go-to? This is my everyday drink. Yeah, this is, this is my go-to beer. It's uh, it's nice. It's not too strong. 4.3, so you can slam plenty of them. It's got I a watched... really nice craft beer flavor. It, it's a proper craft beer, but it's not expensive. I've watched you crack beers in the morning, which... And it blows my mind because I'm not a, I can't do alcohol. He's not a day drinker. No, she is. She comes. I'll only do it when I'm on a live show. I generally don't drink until the afternoon at least, but um, it's, it's one 20 in the afternoon here. So. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that's oh. <laughs> her friend, she comes from a long line of rednecks. I don't think, I think I've seen her dad twice without beer. Once was at a church. Uh, it was at your sister's wedding and he immediately opened one up after. And then it once was, it wasn't a funeral. Uh, oh, we were out for breakfast at, some restaurant oh, yeah. at a truck stop. So I've seen him twice without, so I know he can go. I prefer to dry, day drink. I prefer I just, to like stretch my drunk it. out on like a nice it, it, level no. yeah. base and then still go to bed at a decent hour. That's weird That's it. for me. No, drinking is as a race. And if I'm sitting down in the fucking pits, <laughs> If I'm in a, if I'm in the pits of a of a NASCAR race and just watching the cars go around, no, that's stupid. That's too. You have a wine with dinner, cute. Give me the bottle. Mine is who who can black out first? Where do they go? One, two, three, go. <laughs> what kind of what kind of drinker are you? Can you just like stretch it out for the day? I like to, I like to just drink all day. Like I'll, yeah. I'll drink all day, and then I'll get that I'll get to that point where I've been drinking all day, and I, I'm like day drunk because you've just had like 15 beers but it's over the case of like six hours but you're pissed by the end of it that's like my ideal that's I my don't I understand ideal it deal situation where's the party I'm, my problem is because i stopped becoming motivated to work on to if i'm doing carpentry and i start having beers pretty soon there's rings yeah, all can't. over what i'm building yeah yeah if you and you want to get the, the work done and then enjoy the beer Exactly. It's it's a reward. It's my treat. And I love treats. Like but I, I, I'm different. I, I'll be doing jobs around the house. Like yesterday was a, was a house job day. So I was, you know, fixing things and tidying the garage. And I was just drinking beers all day. I'll just, I'll just drink all afternoon as I'm doing stuff. I have to, I like to drink beer as I'm doing the things. That's it, how I am. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Sure. I like to do the things and reward myself with the treat. It's, it's beer is like a blow job. No, it was like four o'clock the other day. And we have these yeah. things that I found at Costco actually. So keep in mind, it's a vodka freezy. <sighs> delicious oh it's a freezy but it's it, do you guys have a liquor store in your costco no 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 it's no oh. alcohol at costco 
Oh, we have alcohol at our Costco. Oh, so they have this big tub that's filled with freezies that have vodka in them. I'm a, I love vodka. And, and the other day, it was like the middle of the afternoon. I was like, is it too early for us to have a vodka freezy? He was like, it's way too early for me. Manny's like seven foot Too 12. bad for you. Pass me that wine bottle. <laughs> at Costco, they sell vodka like this, this size, but twice the height. Yeah. It's like 1.75 for like 15 bucks. Dude, and it's the giantest <laughs> bottles. And listen, Actually, a 1.75 for 12 dollars There would be people that can't carry that. Yes. Dude. Like my wife would struggle to carry that. She'd be it's like, the size of my kids. Yeah. Here's a small child filled with alcohol. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what it is. That is exactly what it is. 100%. Which is what, but that, see, that's again, I love good craft beer. My biggest problem is I have my, I'm, my body's predisposed to getting pissed. His native blood doesn't like beer very much. So when I, if I have two regular ass, 4%, 3 points, whatever these beers are, you get more drunk off beer than you do from spirits. These two beers, I'm good for the rest of the night. Absolutely. I don't have to have anything else the rest of the night. Vodka, I can sip and drink that straight six hours and be. Just fine. I'll be yeah, I'll be drunk at the end of it, but I'll be just fine. <laughs> but, we'll go out for dinner and he'll have two. I mean, he'll get like a good, like a six, seven, eight, nine percent a good IPA, good local IPA beer. Yeah. Gets one and a half, and he's like, I can't drink the rest of this beer. No, I'm <laughs> fucked. I'll get whiskey dick like after three. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> like I'm I'm horny, but I'd rather go party right now. No, I don't drink spirits that much. I like I like a scotch and a rum every now and again. Brown liquor fucks me up too. I think it's because of the carbohydrates or the. It's the gluten. The oh, okay. gluten. Yeah, I have a gluten. Do I have a gluten thing? I don't know, but that's what it is about natives. That's what they say. It's the gluten in the beer. Yeah, if I can't do a, a couple of beers, then I'm good. I'm solid for the rest of the night right now too. I, and I'm also the water champ. I just drank this. This was full before we started. I went and filled this Holy up. Holy shit! How have you not been to the toilet yet, dude? My bladder's pretty badass, but once I break the seal, I've got like a UTI all of a sudden. It's just crazy. <laughs> I'm just pissing nonstop if I break the seal. I'm pissing but, nonstop just anyway. Caffeine d- and alcohol are my two just uh, have one beer piss, one beer piss, one beer piss. That's that's how it goes. That sounds Someone like a bad night of a party. A Chinese yeah. bladder at birth. A Chinese bladder at birth? A little Chinese bladder, yeah. That's little, cute. Little. <laughs> Look at my house. How do you go to a party? You have to pee every single time you have a beer? I have to make sure I know where the fucking toilets are. It's super, yeah. that, that's that's the biggest thing. I, the problem I have at an expo is uh, drinking because the, the toilets are always super far away from where I am. And then I go to the toilet and people stop me and they want to chat. And I'm just like, I, I'll be back with you. I need a piss. And I go to fucking run. <laughs> I was going to say, you would. I, Speaking I, of which, I feel like I can feel one coming on now. <laughs> go, pee, you know, It's fucked up because now that you're talking about it, I have to go pee. Manny, you and Mike are going to have to take over for a sec. <laughs> Me and Bogan have to go pee. Go You're gonna go pee. No. Okay, you go pee. Oh, Bogan's gonna go pee too. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. What was the weather like there today in California? Uh, it was a pretty nice day today. It was uh, mid 80s today. Oh my god, I'm so fucking bad. jealous. I'm so jealous. I'm so. Today was a nice day. The last couple of days have been nice, but like right now it's 47 degrees outside. Oh, I don't even know what time. Let me see real quick what it is. Uh, It's 63 outside right now. 63. Yeah, that's like what our high was today. Was 63 degrees. Wednesday, I'll probably hit 100 on Wednesday. Holy shit. High this week. Yeah. Is this is this normal temperature for California or is this pretty high? Hmm. As we creep into towards June, it starts getting that way. It just dep- it depends where you're at. Like I live more inland, so it's definitely going to be a little. Oh, it's definitely warmer, hotter than than near the coast. Yeah. Um, we're kind of block. I have a little. There's a little mountain range that we're pretty close to that blocks us off, so it uh, it stays a little warmer. Yeah. Bogan, what was the weather like there for you guys today? So, uh, like a bit of sun, a little bit of cloud, kind of cooler weather, I suppose. So, because you guys are like, are you guys coming in on winter right now? Yeah, so we're in what you guys call fall, what we call uh, autumn. Yeah. Uh, what is the actual temperature today? Like eighteen, so it's like fifties. Okay. Fifty sixties, sixties. Yeah, it's probably sixties. 
Mike was Mike lives in California. I don't know if you caught that at all, but he was just saying there were like 80 degrees today in California. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah. I thought so. that sounds real nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna get cold here, which which I hate. Um uh, being skinny, the cold weather, you just can't retain heat. I don't like the cold. No, I don't like the cold either. I mean, it's not the thing is, is like, so I grew up kind of like you did. I wouldn't say out in the country, but very country like life. Rural. Yes. And <laughs> um, so I enjoy the winter. Like I like the winter. I like being outside when it's winter, but my body just doesn't. My body doesn't. I like winter for the first month. Yes. I'm like, oh, we can wear hoodies again, like put on a jacket, you know, you get the yep. get the winter fashion going. And you know, I like a wood fire. I love wood fires. You get that country going. But then after a month, I'm like, hey, I'm done with the cold. Can we have the warmth back again? You Let's- guys get snow? Not in South well, um, up in the hills, once every ten years they might get a little bit of oh, snow. Okay. But, so that's no. like the big excitement here. When it gets cold, we get snow. And like yeah. here, like Christmas with snow is like the ideal situation. It's like so when we can fun. have you don't have fun in the snow. You, yes. you can do a bunch of things in the snow that you can't do. Yep. Yep. Without but snow. then after like February, it's like, all right. <laughs> it's one of those for let's, me. Let's get this on it. Let's get this. I, I love so like I built like this DIY shit that I do and I build like for the channel itself or for the my Instagram. I wish I would have known that it would have become a vein of of followers and, and viewers <clears throat> who oh, like that. Turn. It's like I build dumb shit out of dumb shit. So like I built a, a, a wooden snow plow out of a four by four, two by fours and a four by uh, two piece of fucking plywood. And I, you know, we'll pretend that I, I didn't steal them. I took some signs without asking, but they're made out of metal that withstands rust and shit, zinc coated, okay. whatever. So I, I took these caution signs and, uh, you know, I fashioned myself a snow plow on the four wheeler and it's a two wheel drive four wheeler, but it worked. <laughs> And I wish it would, I still have the video on Instagram, but I wish it would still have it now. So things like, if I have things to do in the wintertime on the side-by-side or on the snowmobiles, I'm fine. I'm fine for a, a good while. But like you said, two months, three months into it, your guys' winter seems perfect though. You'd probably be like, oh, this is a walk in a park. Yeah, it doesn't snow six feet or anything? It doesn't snow at all. Oh, what's the, so what's the temperature like in... In so in the winter, it'll, it'll uh, today it's, you know, 50s, 60s. Uh, it's cool, but it's not cold because we're just in, we're just in autumn, but it'll get down to, you know, the forties is about the coldest it'll get. That's, that's phenomenal. That's God. That's like a dream. Like Mike, what, dude, we were calling him in, I don't know, February and he's like, Oh, it's 75. I'm like, how oh, the fuck? That's great. Yeah. Well, the see part- California is similar. Like LA is a uh-huh. really similar climate to, to where I'm from in South Australia. In fact, the cities are almost laid out really similar in that you've got the coast and then a flat plain where the city is. And then uh-huh. you've got hills that come up behind it. The difference is, is the hills and the mountains behind LA are yep. taller than what we have in South Australia, but I, I had a video where I had some footage of me driving down into the city and people were commenting like, Oh, it looks like Southern California. Like it, it looks like LA. So we get a similar weather vibe in that it's really dry and hot during the, the summer. We'll be up at a uh, hundred, 110. We'll even get 115 degree days um, during the summer. Yeah. Super I don't, I do dry. not envy that shit. I don't, the dry helps that, a lot. Man. I love a 30, 30 degrees, like Celsius. So a hundred uh-huh. is, is like good for me. I'm, I'm loving that. If it's dry, it's a big, so my dad, um, used to live down with my dad in Texas for, for short bursts at a time, a couple months at a time in El Paso in the desert. And we own, we own like 40 acres down there. It's a completely different heat. It's hot. Don't get me wrong. But in, yeah. In Minnesota, it's, it's, we have 10,000 lakes. We have way more than that, but that's just the state also, model. It's humid. It's just muggy. Like even the other day it was 60 some degrees out, but it, you'd be have sweat beads on your face and it's, it's cool. It's not like hot, but it's muggy all the time. Yeah. Like there's a lake everywhere. There's a lake right there behind our house, <laughs> like right over there and across the fucking highway. And it, yeah. the mosquitoes, bro. Although I would rather have mosquitoes than whatever the fuck you have six packed kangaroos who fight each other i'm not trying to get boxed up scorpions and tarantulas scorpions tarantulas bro have you ever seen the six-pack fucking jack jacked the kangaroo can i ask you what's the the weirdest thing you've had in your house like a scorpion a tarantula like what's the weirdest thing you've had in your house uh well my dad had to get like a snake out from behind the washing machine once as a kid i remember that 
Um, but that was just like a red belly. Like he, he'll make you a bit sick, but he probably won't kill you unless you're a small kid. Um, but you know, then you got like brown snakes, which which you got about twenty minutes before you're fucking dead. Um, maybe. Oh shit! There's no anti venom. Oh no! You you could get to a hospital, but you got you, to, you got twenty yeah. thirty minutes to get to a hospital. Oh Jesus! With like a brown I watched snake. this uh, off road. But I, I mean, the thing is, the bugs in South Australia they they generally don't see in Queensland. They get into your house, so you will have that's where you see like the the frogs in your toilet and the snakes oh. in your fucking bathroom. But most of the time they're like pythons and stuff in Queensland. They're, they're not venomous um, snakes. Yeah. Most of the venomous snakes are in the drier climates like South Australia where you get the, the um, King Browns and stuff like that. But they don't really come into your house. You'll find them like under a metal drum in your shed or, or you know, under a, a feeding trough in the paddock for a cow or something like that. But mm. They don't really come into your house. And if you make plenty of noise when you're out in the bush, the snakes are going to fuck right off. Like they're not going to hang around. Um, so you don't really have to worry. Like no one's died from a snake bite in a long time. Um, kangaroos again, like unless you corner that big fucker and, and you know, he can't get away, then he's not going to just start fighting you. Mm-hmm. The guy who was punching that one, cause it was fighting his dog. Well, again, his dog went over and like kind of razzed up the kangaroo. So it's not he like had... you have to worry about getting beaten up by a kangaroo or. <laughs> well, he had fucking moves. When I, the difference no, is I thought dude. kangaroos were like four foot. No, those this things motherfucker are was little gray seven ones. foot. Yeah. The little gray ones that you go to the nature reserves and you pet and feed them. That's the little gray ones. The big red ones. Ones, they're they're normally only out in the wild you see a few of them in animal reserves but they're not the ones you go and feed they're the big guys they're the ones that get muscular but again like mm-hmm. unless you corner him in a paddock he's not gonna like want to fight you mm-hmm. now, so from what i understand i've, I've got a, a, a few patrons down in um in australia he shot out to hamish and i always say hamish like he's middle eastern and fucking uh andrew a, a bunch of dudes but i had one of them this was this was a while back it's like a year ago but he had sent me photos of he's like this is a kangaroo feast i'm like a what he goes a kangaroo feast i'm like what do you mean you're about to eat bambi basically uh, the, <laughs> yeah you can eat kangaroo well, of course what but is it like but to me it's, it's really like, lean yeah, really it's, lean there's like no fat on it so we it's very deer, lean meat. yeah we eat deer constantly and don't think it's weird he it's said it's the same like thing deer. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm sure it's probably we have because you hit kangaroos all the time in your car or when you're driving on oh. country roads and you hit deer deer you know. yep they fuck your shit up, but people hit them. The yeah. problem uh, is, is that I look at them like they're human because their torso and their arms look they very stand up humanoid. On their back legs, it looks it's like. also because, you know, they're the ones that you, because you go to like kangaroo padding sanctuaries, you know, so right. it's a bit more of like a friendly animal. Plus we have well, on our coat of arms. <laughs> no shit, seriously? <laughs> yeah, we eat them. <laughs> oh, lab work says barbecued roux is, or roux is brilliant. It's, it's brilliant, mate. Yeah, if you get if the thing with kangaroos, you need to cook it right because it's super lean. If you cook it too long, it gets really, really chewy and it's not good. So you got to cook it right um, on like an open flame and, and it's really nice. But it's not something that Aussies eat regularly. We eat lamb and beef. That's what we're generally in pork. Oh, we eat okay. lamb, okay. beef, and pork. We eat okay. some weird shit here. It always like blows chicken, my mind. Chicken, beef, and pork are like our. But the thing is, you yeah. can. I've seen these. I've seen this. What is it? That binging with Babbitt show uh, in the U.S. And mm-hmm. he goes and he gets. He's going to make the most fucked up burrito, and he gets. He gets. I think it's thirty different kinds of meat, and so he get. He goes and gets like the most weird shit. He gets like bison. He gets fucking oh. mm-hmm. rattlesnake. He's got fucking all of this weird meat. And he puts it into a burrito and it's fucking terrible. Of course it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it is. Bison is the same. We've had bison before. Bison. He had yeah. deer. He had fucking yep. moose. He had uh that, like, those are all like redneck American things to eat. I mean, but, but, but I grew up like so like even at, on the reservation, uh I've had bison plenty. And so like, I guess I'm accustomed to it. So to me, bison's not weird, it's just, it's just a bison moose elk that, that that's not weird to me weird is like i don't know the nine-year-old neighbor kid like that's fucking getting weird shit like that but i've, <laughs> I've always you yeah, don't eat that but rabbit same thing that's not that weird squirrel you're starting to get all right come on like where's the confederate desperate. flag yeah. yeah and i would love to eat squirrel i just i'm not one of those like i would love to eat dog I would, I would genuinely like. Why would you like I, to eat dog? No way! I, just, I don't want to eat a dog. I don't mind it. See, like, this is the thing, though. Nas no. is the kind of person that will eat anything two or three times. Yeah, I have a rule. Just My rule is because eat anything three times. I'll try anything three times. Because how do you know the person you had it from the first time cooked just it any good? Cook it right. right. The yeah, second time, the second time, same thing. 
Third time, if it's starting to all taste the same, it's like, well, you know, fuck off. Like, I'm done. <laughs> this is uh, just not for eating. It's just it's not for eating. Exactly. It's for petting, not for eating. It's Fido, not for the barbecue. Um, Somebody just said in the chat that you can find kangaroo meat at a grocery store. Is that true? In Australia? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can get kangaroo at a, at a grocery store for sure. Yeah, you can get kangaroo. Um, I mean, that's probably the only uh, obscure meat that you'll find there apart from your usual beef lamb. It's something obscure there, though. Because you can't, but you can't buy deer at you can, no, a it's grocery store here. What blows my mind, too, with, with here, you can't buy deer, you can't buy elk. Um, it has to, to, to be like a specifically butcher. licensed place. Yeah. Uh, okay. But there's a lot of wasted meat. Kangaroo everywhere. But see, the thing, funny thing is, right? Get this. Uh, I used to feed my uh, cat and dog kangaroo mints. Oh, what's a cat? What is that? Mints. So like kangaroo mints was quite burger. cheap at the butchers. If if you were going to the butchers and you were getting your normal household meat, you could get pet meat, so meat for your pets. Um, you, we used to feed them kangaroo mints. It was all the leftover bits, I guess, from the mm-hmm. kangaroos that they because they don't use. I do that now. So my cat and dog used to eat kangaroo mints all the time. We do that with uh, with pork, with with beef, with anything. Anything so, that he cuts off the meat yeah, that we're I not going to eat, he still cooks it up and gives it to the animals. The We've got dogs, and, cats, and chickens, and so he fish just like and a snake. But I, I, it only just dawned on me now that yeah, we used to eat. My pets have eaten more kangaroo meat than I have. That is, that's not surprising. Does how, as you said, it's lean. How do you cook it? Do you cook it? Do you ever like choose kangaroo? Not really, no, because I, I mean, I don't mind it every now and again, but uh, it's 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 more expensive than your other meats, and I don't like it as much as I like lamb. I like lamb. I love more. lamb. Love lamb. Lamb is, is Americans that kind don't of eat like a lot a, of lamb, but lamb no. is the best fucking red meat, dude. It's we a, don't eat a lot of it here. It's very expensive here. I was saying, the only it's very why rare I don't, to find. It's, the only reason why I don't is because like if I'm gonna eat lamb, I get a two inch chop. Um, God, and if you cook it correctly, especially if oh, you yeah. get a hot sear, not like a six hundred yeah, degree sear, done. And just keep it, la- yeah, keep it rare as fuck. Same way you cook beef, exact same way. Yeah, same way you keep keep it keep it quick and and hot, and uh, so it should be pink in the middle, nice and uh, charred on the outside. Fuck like yeah, lamb chops are like the Australian. That's what you eat on Australia Day is lamb chops. So your lamb there is more closer to beef here. We, we sell a lot of beef as well. Like we, a lot of beef, a lot of lamb, but lamb is, is like the thing that Australian and New Zealanders. Um, and I think the, the UK as well are big into, but it's like, it's part of our national identity. Really lamb is like, they'll, they'll, they'll run ad campaigns around Australia day. Like eat lamb, you know, it's good. <laughs> I've, I've, wow. heard, I've heard stories. I know this might be about New Zealand, but do you guys have a cat hunting magazine? A cat hunting magazine? Or is that New Zealand? There's probably a cat hunting magazine. And we've got a lot of feral cats in Australia that we need. That, to. That's what it is. Then. It's got to be Australia and New Zealand. But I've seen footage after Rogan was talking about it. I, like, I got to look this up. And I found the footage of dudes in a helicopter. Bup, 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 yeah. Taking out fucking cats and, and elk How and do shit. you shoot a cat from a helicopter? So, no, excuse me. I, mis- I misspoke. Uh, I don't remember if it was elk or moose. But then I watched videos of, of dudes holding up cats. After the after their hunts, and I was like, Oh, are they like uh overpopulated? Yeah, well, yeah. Which, I would love they, to hunt cats. They go and eat the native uh wildlife. Um, okay. feral cats yeah, are a big too. problem in Australia and also in New Zealand. See, in New Zealand, right, there's no there's no predators. Oh, there's nothing, there's not a predator in New Zealand. There's nothing not, over they can't there import can... like a grizzly or a black bear or something. No, but I mean, there are no snakes in New Zealand. Oh, not shit. there's not a single snake in New Zealand. There is no predator. There's there's no cat like there's no native wild cat like there's no cougars or mountain lions. There's no there's no crocodiles. You know there's no there's none of that. The only predators that are around New Zealand would be a great white shark, and that's in the water. Wow. And humans, that's it. So what happens is is like the the fucking um, the feral cats over there, they just go and fuck up all the native wildlife. So they'll eat, they eat birds, they'll eat, you know, small possums, the, the, the little um, uh, smaller animals, the kiwi birds and all the rest of it. They, uh, they have a, a feral cat problem because there's nothing that can kill a cat. Wow. So they just That's fucking go nuts. Crazy. It, we, wild cats are not a thing here, but like, I don't know. We have uh, like a, a huge push for like, Neutering. 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 But we also have a lot of like, if there are cat problems, I feel like we have so many farms that just like adopt wild cats. Mike, how how many how many birds a year in the United States are killed by by cats? 
You want to look that up for us, please? Well, I bet it's more than you think. Our, I would say a hundred million. Our cat kills rabbits, not birds. Our pre, my first time my son ever saw an animal die was when our oldest, or when, our, when my dog Scarface just ran up and fucking just mauled a baby bird or baby uh, rabbit. And it was aggressive. Our cat brought 3.7 billion birds annually killed in the United States by cats. Yeah, I didn't wow. even know there was a billion birds. Yeah, 1.5 billion for Australia. Wow. That's insanity. Three points. One po- no, but can we just talk about the time that our cat brought a whole, uh, oh an gosh. adult rabbit into our, an adult, a dead adult <laughs> rabbit into our house and tried to drag him up the stairs. So you know how cats are supposed to like love you and like uh, bring you gifts like, like your that? cat. Well, no, your that's cat. what he's doing. He's, he's bringing you, he's, he's no, saying, no, he's not. You're oh, the alpha what I male. No, no, no. That's exactly what it is. You're the alpha and he's bringing you his trophy. He's like, he's here, you're the boss. Bogan. Look at what I brought you. You're wrong. I Our showed cat. my mom the dead rat that my cat killed when I was 12. <laughs> my mom was having a nap. So she was in bed and I came in and I <laughs> oh. her half asleep face. She's like woken up to this dead rat dangling above her Oh face. my God, I would lose my mind. Oh, she freak- fucking lost it. Like I was 12 oh. and she lost her shit. Yeah, my one of two. So your your cats are normal. Our cat <laughs> is a feral cat that we rescued out of a. We rescued him from a barn. From a barn, and we say we rescued. He was way happier in the barn, but <laughs> he doesn't bring us. Like, he doesn't they like us. They captured me from the yes. barn. Yes, that's exactly. He doesn't what like us. None of that shit. So what he did was he brought the full grown rabbit into the house. He didn't want to give it to anybody. He was taking it upstairs. So he could eat it to his room. He has a fucking room, Bogan. This cat lives with a wait, wait, he, Mandy. What's his name? He doesn't have, he doesn't a, have name. a name. He was just the cat. The cat. But the thing is, is first he drug it up the steps onto the deck, and we have chickens. So it was like a standoff between the cat and the four chickens around this dead rabbit of like oh, who God. who was going to get it. The chickens are, are more aggressive than the cat, but our cat's not a nice bad. cat. Like the kids can't touch him. I can't touch him. He's he, just hanging around because you guys keep feeding him, basically. Yes, we, that's yeah, exactly. Oh, when he's hungry, he's reason. a nice cat. He's man, let me tell yeah. you fucking and I'm allergic, highly allergic to cats, so I'm glad that he's not nice. I was but gonna say he's cat. outside a lot. Because my kids wanted it and she wanted it. You put it's, up with a like a, a, this, a allergy inducing. No, but animal. the thing is, is he doesn't he doesn't he's never around. He literally yeah. sneaks out the okay. window and like does his thing outside and then just comes in when he's ready to eat. I carry yeah. EpiPens right. for it, Sam. We have EpiPens. He has one in here. I carry one in my purse, but because I'm, oh, I'm you, get, you can get that you can get that badly uh, reaction die from it. Yeah. Well oh, shit. normally I had a mate that was allergic and his eyes would swell up red and you know yeah. he would be uncomfortable, but he wouldn't die. No, when we go to my dad's house, that's your reaction. Yeah, I was gonna say because as they as don't touch me, but really, it's the wasps. That's yeah, why well, we I'm, carry it. I, I, you, know you know what you... it is? Sorry, before you get into the wasps, you know what it is that you're allergic to in the cat? What's that? It's not the hair; it's the it's saliva. The... Oh, oh, I thought it was the dander. So check this out. Apparently, oh, you it's can't the see saliva. it. So oh. where the cat licked me? Look at that. Do you see those? Right there. So I was on my phone taking a poo poo. And the cat comes and he does his little, because he's hungry, does a little yeah. thing between my legs, holding he's himself like, up. And he starts licking my arm where my where I'm holding my phone. And look at, you see? Mm-hmm. Right there. It turns into these tiny little bumps, which is completely different than when I start to hold, when I hold him. So the longest time I would wake up and I, every morning I, I call the patrons on, on Instagram and I'm fucking, and they're like, wh- like, why do you look like this in the morning? I'm like, I, dude, I don't know. I have no, like my face is like my bags under my, and I'm puffy. I'm like, I think I'm dying. I just, I think my kidneys are <laughs> straight down. I might be dead in a week, bro. Up your, up your tier. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. I might have to pay for dialysis. And uh, all of a sudden, one of them goes, do you have a cat, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you let the cat sleep with you? I'm like, no, not that I'm aware of. Come to fucking find out. Two, three o'clock in the morning, one of these evenings. This cat is on my face, Bogan. He's on my, he's on and my this guy fucking, sleeps like a fucking like a, rock. He, a, a whole You're train out. could plow through our house and he would have no idea so, so. come to find out i think it was i don't know if it was chris or someone in the, on you. fucking told me what the fuck was happening come to find out they were right it was me it was mike it was mike fucking mike mike's like dude the cat is t- is touching you at night. Like, there's no way he doesn't like me. Like, he's like, he's sitting there. You're asleep. He's like rubbing his ass on. He's like, yeah, probably. He's gonna yes. Fuck up his exactly. day when he's wakes up. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna think that he's got kidney problems in the morning. Just wait. Mm. Oh my god. That's so funny. 
Bogan, bro, I can't thank you enough for being on the show, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on, guys. It's been a lot of fun. 100%. It is a lot of fun. Uh, guys, so everyone's uh, watching, we better have the same exact fucking ratings next Sunday at 9 p.m. <laughs> and then <laughs> you guys don't know this, but we're this is now a buy monthly thing where bogan comes oh, on yeah did bogan, he agree to that yep, before every, you were it's just every, like <laughs> it's twice a month twice a month uh same time every time. monthly isn't yep. that every other no, i thought uh but whatever you know it's I bisexual mean, sorry, by weekly bi-weekly. Yeah. Bi-weekly. Yeah. bi-weekly yeah <laughs> so, no not bi-weekly it's bi-monthly right so that would be every other month Back me up on this, Sam. Come on. I have a question correct. for you, real quick. I have a question. Yeah. When you're out, when you're like out at like a convention or out, do people call you Bogan? Uh, most or of the time, yeah, Bogan. Sam. If they know my real name, then I quite often get Sam. But a lot of the time, it's just Bogan, which is fine. Yeah. So this is my another question. Are you ever out with your wife and people like approach you and that kind of stuff? Or not they... very often, but occasionally, like it's happened maybe 10, 10 times or something like that. I was at a, I was at Costco once I got recognized at Costco. That was kind of funny. Um, yeah. and I got the, one of the best places that I got recognized was going through the airport security at my hometown airport. Uh, and the guy at security was like, Hey man, how's the channel going? And I was like, Oh yeah, good. Thanks. I was like, there's one person that watches your shit that you want to be meeting in public. It's the guy who's like checking your bags and yeah. letting you through security. Oh, tell me about it. No, I'm telling you right now. Security is one of our biggest yeah. anxieties when we travel. Cause we get yeah. pulled over every, almost every single time they pull oh, his yeah. security on. It's gotten to for? the point now that like I, t- and it's terrible, but like he's, like kind of a scary looking Mexican dude. And I'm just this, like, <laughs> and I'm just this like, like okay, white Jose, girl. He's definitely got some fucking cocaine strapped to his So like, there's been a, a lot of times, well, especially leaving a convention or something, he's like, you need to take this in your carry on because if <laughs> I have all this shit in my carry on, this is going to look sketchy as fuck. The, the recognizing thing was the coolest one out of all the times it's happened, it's only happened same with me like about ten times or so in public, just like when you're not expect not at a convention. Was in Colorado, in the middle of fucking no in Columbine, and we were out with my mom. We had flown there for the weekend just because my aunt lives there, and it was a surprise mm-hmm. for my mom for her birthday. And my kids were. It was the most perfect scenario, bro. It was so perfect. We were at a fucking Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> down to eat my mom's there mandy's there both my kids are there and all of a sudden dude walks up i was like are you vaping with these I'm like yeah and i don't remember he like happened. freaked out and his mom and i are both like <laughs> it was the coolest <laughs> fucking thing i was like bro i am i i matter of fact let's get a picture because like for me it's really weird when you're out in public and i hear th- people call him thesis it yeah it's weird for me. That's weird for me. She I said it during the sex once. Coffee once and was like, baby Bogan. I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's me. Do, well, are you, so are you more well-known in Australia or the U S do you think? Uh, the U S and the UK before Australia, for sure. So you're like a unicorn. Like when, when people meet you, it's, a, and, and I've, I've told this a million, I told Mandy, like my goal is for people to say the same things about me that they say about Bogan. <laughs> no. It's, Dude, it's genuine. I remember the first time we actually we finally met in person, and I think it was Ray the other night was talking about it. We were running towards each other, like prancing, <laughs> and I I picked you up. It was like that. It was <laughs> fucking daisies were going by and shit. It was amazing. <laughs> My so I was at <laughs> yes, that's the song I was thinking too. See? Did we see him at it was I NVE? Yes. yes, I was at I was at NVE with him. Oh my god, you guys! No, oh, shit. I was at NVE with him, but I was carrying a camera the whole time, so I was just like back. And one yeah. of our friends was with us, and he, I, the only thing I remember, we were like close to your booth. And it was just like one of our friends that was with us, he comes over to Nas and he kind of pulls me say, he goes, can you please go introduce me to Bogan? <laughs> <laughs> and that, I'm like, dude, that's, I'm like, you're an asshole, bro. Like, I want you to feel like that about me. He's like, well, you're just Nas, bro. Like, introduce me over to Bogan. <laughs> no. <laughs> when my patrons start asking me the stat show, I'm like, hey. But only if I can come to. You're like, you're like, yeah, all right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was bizarre too because at MVE you had your buddies there with a the dog and shit. Yep. It was so hilarious. Excuse me. I had companies. I used your your yours in my picture for the thumbnail for the blotto, 
and uh, I got sent extra packages because like oh, you collaborate with a bogan and I was like <laughs> not not on his tank but on that video you could sure sure I did like we send you some extra sampo and I'm like okay appreciate it <laughs> that's dope <laughs> I think that was og vape as a matter of fact that's I was dope. like I'll, I'll take those samples from you yeah sure. go for it man but, was yeah. he at ECC were we you at ECC, ECC over in, in, in this last August oh not the last one I went last in 2018 one. Oh, 2019. Okay. Bro, do you remember that the- was the last one we went to? And I had no experience of it, but Mike was there and he said it's just it, it's kind of a flop comparative to yeah. Well, we we I mean, my the guy that does my juice, well, the company that does my juice, they had been to an ECC a few years before and they were you know really impressed with it. Then we did the booth over at ECC, and yeah, we were a little disappointed with the with the turnout um for ECC in 2018. It seems did you like guys go more- 2019? Yeah, yeah. And, and was it even less than 2018? Yeah. I mean, from what, like, Mike was with us here. I had never been before. And, and the, oh, you had been in 18. Yep. And, um, I'm trying to think of, like, the Everyone biggest says one. says that ECC has kind of been dropping every year. Yeah. Well, it, dude, I'm telling you. So I'm one of those people who I don't, I don't like to say, speak ill of anything. Because I, I, you put it out into the universe, man. Stop saying that shit. Yeah. But uh, when I was featured on that magazine, that uh I don't remember what it was that year 2015 I've been going to convention since 2014 and that one at the mile high vape fest in Colorado was fucking lit bro it was vapor shark had like a small jet like I, I, it was hard to even explain like it was yeah huge. and that were the days that we heard about the american conventions in 2014 15 16 that were the the big big you know it looked crazy Dude, it was multiple multiple rooms like the, every room they had at this convention center was packed, I was was packed. Mm-hmm. Like you couldn't it was sweat just dr- the ac was broken one of the it was fucking there was bitches and thongs which smelled horrible because it was sweaty it was it was a blast it was a fucking blast the someone ordered the wrong color for the cloud comp banner on stage and it was white who the fuck does that <laughs> with black lines i'm like someone doesn't know the audience they're catering to um has your wife ever been to you with you to a convention before do you guys ever no, travel so together the- for work oops I've dropped my vapes uh so she has never come to a show mostly because um the kids have been quite young evie's only just turning four so oh, okay. trying to take a two or three year old on a plane for so the thing is they're always 20 hour flights yeah um for me anywhere I how go, does that I, how do you deal with that shit you just deal with it like you just deal with it i think uh, I now you're flying first class right like fucking business no class. man i wish i wish i've uh oh. economy every time i've only flown business um for one of those long haul flights. And where was that to? Man. That was to London. That was fucking sick. Like it was fucking nuts. Um, we got upgraded on accident once. The moment that it happened, we felt like snobs. We were like, look at these fucking pieces of shit back there in storage. <laughs> like we it was it wasn't even uh we didn't even pay for it. Did we? No, but the thing is is like it was a five hour five and a half hour flight to the Dominican and we're in business class and it was like this is fucking awful. Well, what? Well, just the flight, the length of the flight. Right, but in so I cannot class, imagine sure wasn't. It was... trying to travel for twenty hours. Yeah, most of the time, yeah, One twenty-two way. to twenty-four hours it takes me to get anywhere. It's a seven and a half hour to Dubai, and then another thirteen and a half to. You've London. been to Dubai, that's right. Bro. Only to the airport so far. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Fuck. I'll be going hopefully to the expo when it gets rescheduled, but uh, I haven't actually been outside the airport yet. What's that word you just said? When it gets um, rescheduled, 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 rescheduled. You guys say schedule, don't you? We say schedule. Yeah, yeah we schedule. say schedule. Schedule. Gonna schedule it. Press. So, please check my. Schedule. So, question. I know. So, like, I've traveled with him a couple of times, but it's only because we're like, it's one of those things that it's like really one of the only times that him and I get to be with all the kids. Like, be with all the kids. So, yeah. thankfully, like my his parents step in my parents step in like you know a couple of days here a couple of days there and like make it work while we're gone do you guys not live near your parents or is it no, just, the thing, it just we could we could do that but the thing is uh a three-year-old or a two-year-old she's just so tight with with claire yeah um well. and and me as well but definitely more so obviously to her mom when she's super young so when yeah. she was like two and and two and a half three firstly the idea of taking her on a 20-hour flight um, not happening i mean we've done 
a fight has done six hour flight to Bali when she was six months old. But when she's six months old, you know, you rock them to sleep, you breastfeed yep, yep. them, you know, they're, they're easy to take on a flight when they're, yep. I think anyway, yep. I would rather take a six month old baby on a plane than my three and a half year old. Absolutely. When you tell yep. her that she has to stay in her seat, she doesn't understand why. And she, she doesn't bet. care what the reason is. Yeah. It turns totally to a bet. Fine. Yeah. Yep. You have to stay in your seat. Want to bet? And there's only like 20 hours is a long time. There's only so many episodes of Peppa Pig and yep. Ninjago yep. that she can watch before she's like, I don't want to be in this tin can anymore and I can't do anything. Yep. So we, yep. we just have abstained from taking her uh, with us on those long, long flights until she's a little bit older. Um, but yep. once things pick up, yeah, we do hopefully want to want to head over to to some of these shows together with the kids so that we can do a bit of a family holiday at the same time. Yep. yep. Um, but it's just been, it's just not worth it. Plus, um, you know, if she's young, it's super expensive. If it's going to be a fucking a nightmare on the plane, it's just it's not worth it. it. And yep. leaving them on their own for, on her own for, because if you're going to go to the UK, you're not going to go for three or four days. You're going to go f- make it worth your while. A minimum 10 days is sort yep. of generally... The, the length of the, that these trips go for what's your favorite place that you've been to i've been so blessed man like in the last two years um i've been to the uk four times i've been to the us twice i did nve in connecticut i did uh acc in california uh the uk four times uh, stuttgart in germany uh i got to go to south africa I got to go to fucking New Zealand, Christchurch, uh, not Christchurch, Auckland. I went down to Wellington. Um, where else? Are these all vape related? Yeah, all of those, all, all those sort of vape. Is there travel. any ever any language barriers when you travel like that? Those guys too. Uh, not really. Um, the okay. only place that I would have that would be Germany, but everyone mm-hmm. speaks such great English over there. They're super organized and and on it. So Germany was easy. South Africa again, they all speak English, and and I had the people that were bringing me over for a show kind of look after me and take me around, but they'll all, they all speak English and Afrikaans obviously is their second. Um, where else would have been a language? I think that's it. Obviously America. I mean, you guys try to speak English. <laughs> <laughs> the Brits say that about you guys. Man. Aluminum, aluminum. <laughs> it's, it's, it's aluminum, man. You guys even spell it weird. Color has a fucking U in it, you fucking drongo. It's aluminum. No, color. No, no, flavor doesn't have a U either. It's got a U. Vapor has a U. Mom is an O. We all know this. Mom. Mom. Mom Mom is a type of flower. Mom is positive. It is. A mom is a flower. Or mom is a secret. Mom's the word. (laughs) My best Jason Statham accent. You ready? You have to match it. Okay? You know mine. That's the best Jason Statham you ever. You know mine. Okay, now your turn. What's your you just do what you just did two words. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's perfect. You know what I mean? That's per- that's it. That's the best Jason. Or okay, Jason. I'm gonna do Jason Stantham from um. It's from, Statham from, from, from it Snatch. Statham? Okay, I just did. J- Jason. Fucking Pikey. Let him do it. Go. Fucking Pikeys. I fucking hate Pikeys. That's pretty good. It's not as good as you know what I mean. Hey Turkish. <laughs> that was pretty good. Hey Turkish. See, that's perfect. Tommy, oh. you know what I've said about thinking? Holy shit, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I have to fucking get my fucking... What? Do that again. That's... Tommy, you know what I've told you about thinking? Holy shit. <laughs> Turkish. I see, damn it. Mine's... Wow. I have, right. I have many words. I'm really good with words. We have the best words. <laughs> the best, best words. words. <laughs> now, do it. Do, uh, 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 okay. Hank Hill. Damn it, Luan. Put some clothes on. Okay. What's the, that? That's Hank Hill from King of the Hill. Bobby, no. Get away from that sheep. Oh, that's Go pretty ahead. good. <laughs> 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 it's, man, Hank's so good. I love fucking. I don't, I don't know, Bobby. That doesn't. That's, that's getting a bit too yogi bear, isn't it? It, it was a little like yoga bearish. Yeah. Boy, and put some clothes on. Bob. Oh, there, there it is. Bo- Bobby. I don't know about Bobby. <laughs> Come on down in here. I could, you can work with that. You can work with that one. Boom, <laughs> Oh, that's when he's angry. He's like, oh, and he's disgusted. He's, he sees a mannequin head in Bobby's room. Bobby, no. Oh. <laughs> there you go. The, the no. That's the no. Bobby, no. Bobby, no. That's oh, fuck. Good. You did that well. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, fuck. All right, okay. All right, all right. 
Oh, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Do it again. Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. No, uh, Holy oh shit. I'll buy a Lincoln. <laughs> Fucking a. What is he? What is he? What's his whiskey ads? What does he say in his whiskey ads? I, whiskey ads. Wow. Oh, we only see car. Yeah, we only see car commercials. In Australia, we get a lot of uh, Matthew McConaughey doing the wild tur- wild turkey. You know, he does that. Uh, that's does these wild turkey ads. Your Matthew McConaughey has, is as good as my Hank Hills of, of Hank Hill. Oh, wow. All right. All right. All right. Ah! <laughs> I know it's really good. Bullshit. And, and on that note. <laughs> My Ninja Kitties, it has been a fantastic live. Thank you, Bogan, so much for joining, brother. Bitch, it's so okay, some other truck. 100%, anytime. I mean, bi-monthly, everyone knows. <laughs> Bitch, it's okay, some other truck. That's the most fun shows I've done in a long time, now. That makes, dude, that was the goal. That, that was legitimately the we goal. We just wanted to have fun. We didn't want it to be this, like, interview question about what is happening. No, it's it's, it's good. I like, yeah. I like the Joe Rogan format. We got we got uh, uh, Mikey down here, a.k.a. Jamie, looking after things. Yep. Like, yep. Uh, his name is Stroke Diesel. I'll have to tell you that story off air one of these Stroke times. Stroke Diesel. Yo, there's a there's a yes. pornography. I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> he's got a dick like a pipe, and he f- comes on bitches' faces, bro. It's crazy. He's like nine foot twelve and shit. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't think he wants you to talk about him like oh, that. Man, your <laughs> wife's tolerances for the things you say are far higher than mine. She is a is it? saint. Man, I was going to ask you about that. What her well, what was, her tolerance level is like? I don't have a time. She's pretty good. I mean, I have a fucking mullet, and she puts up with that. So me and Mandy both were talking about, this. bro. So was this a conscious decision? How it long have you been growing the mullet? Like, oh, I'll grow a mullet for a while. That'll be fun. Like a whole vaping bogan channel. That'll work. And then I just kind of got in. I I got, I got attached to it. Now it's how long baby. has it been? Yeah, how, how long have you? I think been we worked it out. It's about three and a half years worth of growth now. It's um, that's pretty good. Yeah. Have you ever tried to grow the beard or is it just the mustache? No, I can't grow a beard. Uh, it's all patchy and shit. It's it's too patchy. I just can't grow a beard. So I, mustache is is the is all I can do. I grow what I, I can. My shit grows in all a for a little bit, but it, it looks shit. I end up just looking like um you know, what's that that guy from the Rick and Morty episode? The the oh, uh, yep. devil. I look like yep. the devil. I'm trying to imagine Bogan with a, with a goatee, and it doesn't. It's because I got work. like a, a, a kind of like a pointed chin. If I get a, a goatee going, I look very. Uh... You're very chiseled though. Like, uh, like you have a decent <laughs> it's a jawline. Very oval face. I my face is it just looks fat. <laughs> oh, like if I shave this, I, I look nine years old. I grow a beard. I can't grow a beard. I can barely grow a beard, bro. But Instagram has a hell of an editing app. So, <laughs> let me tell you something. I mean, right? It's at a. This whole shit, this fucking, this isn't a choice. This is not, I need a jawline. So like it, I had to grow that. You're Essentially, when, I'm, fr- I'm framing it. If I grow a beard, it looks like I'm going to hijack an airplane at knife point. <laughs> well, if you, if because if you do the chin strap, then it just very looks, looks very Islamic. Because that is the Islamic yeah. beard. When you grow a chin strap, but you grow a long chin strap. Right, chin exactly. Strap. It's, it's that neck beard. That's a neck beard life. Neck beard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had a legitimate question that had nothing to do with neck beards or terrorism <laughs> for Bogan that I, I've always wanted to know. Now I can't remember it at all. Mm. Oh, uh, okay. So my I don't I don't bicycle. I don't bike. Um, but I am upset. Like my favorite YouTuber is a biking YouTuber. Uh, his name's Seth's Bike Hacks, and I've been watching him since his channel had thirty some thousand subscribers. Now he's got like eleven billion. And, oh, which nice. is a lot yeah and, and i love to watch like someone who really genuinely deserves it like grow that quickly yeah and he's have you ever heard of seth's bike hacks no i gotta check it out dude and listen i i know your time is limited as is mine but it's one of those things where like it's it's uh appointment viewing when he drops a video we've sat and watched his videos just for the quality i've learned so much from my video like if the barrage short documentary that's what he does weekly, but they're under 10 minutes. So the amount of work that, and he narrates it, the whole nine yards, the amount of work that this man does on his bike, what would you call it, trail? What kind of biking did you do? I would assume mountain biking, right? No, I was more of a BMX kid. Oh, the, perfect. Per- so was I. I hated, I thought mountain bikers were basically like wearing pink tutus and, and sticking bike seats up their ass, <laughs> right? But, however, when I watched this dude, I was like, I am wrong. Oh, yeah. That trail riding is pretty sick. Dude, well, they're, doing, they're doing everything on a mountain bike that I did on, on a Haro. 
What was your bicycle of choice? I had, when I was like growing up, I had, what is it called? It wasn't like a, a really well-known brand. Um, I think it was called a Thrasher. And I can't even remember the brand. It, it was this chrome Ollie bike. It was a freestyle. So it had a freestyle frame with the gyroscope, the four pegs. Yep. Um, but it had this like crazy 90s frame. You remember when they did a split top tube? Okay. It was like two, two narrow bars for the top tube that started and then went back in a V and they had like little bridges going across the top of it. It was a crazy bike. I've frame. never seen that. So that's badass. Yeah, it was just crazy chrome modeling. It had, had purple accents. So it had like purple levers, purple head stem, like purple pedals. It just it was fucking sick. It was the only brand new bike that I ever got as a kid. Everything else was hand-me-downs or secondhand bikes. Um, my first BMX was something we found at a house that my parents bought or rented that was just left there. This rusty old bike that my dad <laughs> fixed up for me. That was, that was my first BMX. That's awesome, though, the fact that he did that. Yeah. Mine was yeah, a Haro, sorry. a Haro T. Oh man, you had a Haro. That's what, that's what, like every kid wanted a fucking Haro, man. I remember watching like Matt Hoffman and, yep. and like Haro bikes and like just wanting a fucking Haro. You gotta remember, I, I had to wait nine months and I, I know exactly because it started in, it was the summer, sometime in August and it was almost, almost a full year by the time I actually, because it was on layaway. I had bicycle mm. bills in West St. Paul. Oh, yeah. Remember when your parents used to lay by shit before you yeah. could just like put it on after pay? Our parents yep. would lay by stuff. Yep. And that's, it was lay, it was lay by. It was like what it was. And it, so by the time, and I know what actually happened, but by the time we ended up paying for it, like, oh shit, sorry, it got stolen. And I was like, you mean you sold it and you didn't fucking have it in stock readily, but yeah. like you didn't think it was going to, I was going to pay for it by now. Do you, I had mowed so many fucking lots. I worked on a llama farm. Oh, it would have been crushing for you. Oh, dude, I was f murdering it. I was just nonstop. I was like, work, I can, I can pay for this bike. And at the time, you, you know, you're 13 years old. Yeah. 250 bucks or 450 bucks, whatever it was. That's, that may as well, but money. that's huge. That's huge. like, that's like, that's what the entire economy is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at 13, 13. <sighs> may as well won the lottery. Um, so. Will Boyle said he had a thrasher too. Oh, no way. Yeah. Who made, Mike, this is your job, brother. We're talking thrasher. about thrasher. What is the Thrasher, brother? Mike, pull that bitch up. Send the I'll link it up. up. I, sure. I, I had a GT when I was a kid. Oh, yes. I, I, the GTs were so good. GT Dino. I just saw one for Somebody else recently. just commented. Crazy Wolf just said the GT Dino. Mongoose. Remember when Mongoose before it was a Walmart oh, brand? Yeah. I was going to say, now you can buy Mongoose at Walmart. Yeah. Giant is now a newer one. Uh, there was one that I just saw. The Citizen. Was it Citizen? I don't remember the name of it. Uh, but I was looking at... Uh, listen. If I had, wasn't a Thrasher. I don't know what it was. I if I had remember. Bogan money... I'd buy myself a fucking a badass mountain bike, but I would I would I would ruin it. I throw I a motor. I don't think you would actually mountain bike. No, but I want one. You just ride it in our backyard. And I would but do then jumps. you'd have to ride it back up the hill, and it would, it would be too much. No, but a mountain bike is for pussy. Like they they have gears. <laughs> they have gears. No, you said you wanted an electric bike. Oh, that too. I want electric KTM. It's different, babe. I've had four beers. I'm wasted. <laughs> I'm fucking blasted right now. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. To be completely honest with you. you I don't think it was a thrasher. I think it was something else. Fuck, I can't, I can't remember what it was. But you said it had two cross or two, two bars. It's like really the... unique tube. Yeah, it had a top, top top tube was two tubes split into into two thin ones. And uh, and they went back and oh, I can't remember what it was called. See, now I want to know. I was going to say, I think Mike's probably on it. Yeah. I bet he is. A Diamondback. I'm looking That's for it. Diamondbacks Diamond were good. Diamondbacks and, and GTs. Um, but the Diamondback, they ended up becoming a Kmart bike. They used to be like right up at the pinnacle of the BMX game. Diamondback is still super popular here for like expensive shit. Oh, they make high-end stuff, but then they then they, a lot of their BMXs ended up in like Kmart and shit. And I was like, ah, oh, that sucks. Do you guys still have Kmarts over there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we go Kmart. Oh, because <sighs> they're not, they don't exist yeah, over they, here they anymore. We're out of business completely. In the, we're in out the of business in the US. That's right. I remember hearing. So do you guys have Walmart and Target then too? Uh, we have Target, but we don't have Walmart. You don't have Walmart. Good. Fuck yeah. Walmart. You have Vegemite though. We have Vegemite. <laughs> what the fuck is Vegemite? What is that? So it's a yeast. It's a yeast compound, I guess you call it. Like it's, it's yeah. It, it's so don't eat Vegemite and eat your pussy. Like it, it won't work out. 
it turned into a yeast infection really Wait, quick. what is Vegemite? It's a, is it a store or is it's it a It's a thing? yeast extract. So they call oh. it a yeast extract. So it's a spread that you put on like toast or sandwiches or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, they made it by accident. They were trying to make something else. And then this was like a secondary component of it. And then they found out that if you put it on toast or whatever, it's really oh my God. It's That's like everything that's ever a good idea always happens. A blowjob. I'm sure that wasn't on purpose. You can't tell me. Uh, this dude's just like, she's just, he had a dumb wife. Let's just be honest. She wasn't. No, no, it would have happened like, I've got my period this month. We can't have sex. And so he's like, well, I put it in your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> maybe the fifth, that sounds pretty close. And all of a sudden, he's like, "This is even better than sex." And then, <laughs> I feel like the first blowjob was prehistoric, and they, she went like, oh, "No, not like that." <laughs> it's more like a suck job, baby. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I want to know how it got the name blowjob because me too. It doesn't really go with that at all. If if Mandy, Mandy, Mike's let's yelling see. at us here. Uh, sh- so thrashers were made by Schwinn. Was it a Schwinn? A Schwinn? No, it wasn't a Schwinn. It wasn't a Thrasher. It was something else. It had like a had like a name like Thrasher or Trickster or something like that. <laughs> it had a name with a T. Oh, thing. hang on. Hang on. Hang on. To- hang on. I might have. <laughs> Mike just sent me this link of a kangaroo versus a T-Rex. So there it is. Did you find it? A Share torker it vagabond. A torker vagabond. I'm looking this up right now, guys. I was going to say, screen share it. Dude, this thing was nuts. The purple one. It's on the top. If you Google search, uh, <sighs> I search. Okay, so I found it. Oh, that purple one? Vagabond BMX bike. The purple one on the right. Except I didn't have purple tires on mine. I was going to say, that purple one looks That purple legit. is dope as fuck. Yeah, but that's Mike, what it you- was. Mike, that can you one see there? it? Yeah, there it is. Yeah. That's it. That was that was what I had. Holy shit. And dude. I had the knee saver handlebars. Man, I would love to get that bike again. I was going to say, if you had that bike now. Yeah, worth it. Oh, dude, I would love that. to ride that. It was like a proper, like, pretty fly for a white boy kind of like. It looks like <laughs> it. Look at that. It looks like it. Yeah, it had, it had like, black tires. but It looks um, like something think, when you would find on the west side. Yeah, if I think you this had, one has that- had like an aftermarket color this one had purple seats and purple tire added to it and maybe mine didn't have purple grips i don't think it had the purple tires but it had all the other purple bits on there it was and the top tube man look at that shit it was sick if mandy if you were rolling that bitch out of fuck the shot you <laughs> we we're both like nine years old like damn she's fly as fuck got purple tires hardcore Dude, yeah. vikings fan See, I want I want Twisted Hex who's watching. I know he's watching. And if he's not watching now, he will be. This is what happens when you have brilliant minds. They like the color purple because the Minnesota Vikings. Fuck the Packers. I okay. love purple when I was a kid. I still love purple now. I still love purple now. It's one of my favorite colors of all time. Purple and green, purple and yellow. Hell yeah. <sighs> Red and black. It's my favorite one of my favorite combos. Purple and green, purple and yellow. When you get made when you were designing your mod, did you pick black? Uh Pick are black. they all black no i mean black's just the most popular color that's just yeah. the market yeah. black always going to have a black version and the black is always going to sell more than any other color yeah. that's yep. just if you don't make a black version of whatever it is you're doing i don't care if it's a car or a vape you need to make a black version yeah yep. yeah it's my favorite for that's what i wear for clothing it's just I, I, black always goes it goes with almost anything i was gonna say black's my color yeah. wardrobe that's, color that's of choice too yeah. that's it exactly yep this bitches i'm drunk i we've got to end this i'm trying to have sex with my wife man and it's 11 <laughs> it's a midnight it's, it's midnight. like three o'clock in the afternoon for him i know he's fine he's fine 220 yeah yeah same thing yeah so is your wife at, at work your kids at school mandate i want to know what like an afternoon looks like we- blake's at school evie only goes to kindy two days a week because she's still young uh and my wife is a marriage celebrant a wedding celebrant so she's got no work at the moment because of corona so oh, okay. so in terms of okay that's what i was gonna ask in terms of a job is school so what is school there it's different in than high school state, in my state it went online what they did is they extended the school holidays and uh they were going to do online learning but then we managed to get on top of things so well during the school holidays that they just went back um to school after after the extended they had a three-week holiday instead of a two or something like that or whatever or four weeks so yeah we had so a, home you for a bit. all year round or What's do you that? guys get like us? Because here we get like a summer break, so they don't go to school from. Oh, so our summer August. break is during Christmas time. So okay. our six, they have six week holiday from the middle of December to the end of January. Okay. So with uh, 
but I mean in general. So like you said your 12 year. Is that what it's like? Do you have high school, middle school? Uh, yeah. So, well, previously we had high school would go from year eight to year 12 and year, primary school is from year one to year seven. But now they're changing things whereby high school is going to take year seven. So you'll start a year earlier for high school. Um, and most of your schools will kind of divide the, you know, the high school years into sort of senior and junior or whatever. Um, but yeah, you have five, five or six years of high school, same sort of stuff. You know, you're finishing year 12 and then going to university or college. Yeah. It's, it blows my mind when, it, when people say going to hospital or going to university. When he said uni, I was like, I don't know what the fuck that means. Yeah, go to uni, university. Yeah, it took me, yeah, you it shorten took me a while everything. to figure that out. Yeah. Shorten it all. Except for your hair. In the back. <laughs> Just in the back. It's, it's in the back. It, it, listen, the reason why I even bring it up is because I'm jealous. Like, I'm, I've got a shitty hairline. It, it just sucks. And does that, your son have a mullet? Oh God, please! No, please. no, he's doing what Fuck. every kid does. You know, he's got the fade with the the swept back. You know, yeah, bit on top. They're all doing that. Oh, it's all like <laughs> hockey say, hair yeah, over here, hockey like hair. long, like the like both the, of our boys. When they do, do this, this whole thing, all the time. a lot. Like oh. <laughs> the emo fringe going. Yeah, yep. what's going on? Yeah, man? both of our boys have got that going on. <laughs> what are you sad about? You have dirt bikes and Xbox. No, it's just like this. Yeah. I know, but, but they always look like like oh. The world is so bad. <laughs> Everything's black. The world's bad. Or I'm trying to make love to my wife, and it's midnight, and she's gonna say it's too late. I'm getting yeah, off this. Gotta, gotta, there's a cutoff time. You gotta get yeah, in. Exactly. <laughs> Bitch, Bogan, thank you so much. Thank brother. you. Thanks for having me, guys. hundred awesome. percent. Mike, thank you so much for what you do, brother. All you guys in the chat, hit the like button before you uh, before you hop off of this bad bitch. And of course, patreon.com slash thesis himself. Support direct uh, direct support to myself. Uh, shout out your Patreon page, Bogan. Just uh, vaping, but well, patreon.com slash vaping bogan, uh, usual, usual place. And then, real quick, last question can, can, When can we expect a uh, soft release or a hard release of the single battery? Well, they're making them at the moment. I should be getting my final pieces to do the video to show everybody them in the next week or so. Uh, and then reviewers should be getting theirs soon. After oh, am that. I included on the reviewer list? Yes, yeah, you're on that list. Um, and hopefully in the next month, it, it, it thing is, is normally I would say about a month, but given that things take so much longer to get from China to where they need to go. So to get to the retail outlets, it could be longer that, but hopefully within a month, we'll see them out on the stores. Beautiful. I'm excited as fuck for it, man. Me too. It's going to be fun. Bitch, it's okay. It's mother truck is now with that being said, I want to tell you that I appreciate you for being with thesis. It is your boy thesis. We're out. Mm.